Hello everybody, welcome to week 8 of the KCM. We're starting things off on Monty Hall this week. Game number 1, Saxory versus Stork. Should be a lot of fun, let's hop right in. Our lineup this week is looking very interesting. As you can see, Royal Light Speed, Best, Stork, Snow, Jadong, Saxory, and Gamo. Maybe uh, Zerg getting a little comfortable there in the first place spot. Yeah, and you know what that means, saying? It means it's just that little bit more likely for Zerg to come last place and uh, maybe see that tiebreaker situation with how strong these other two squads are looking. Yeah, let me bring up the point rankings from last week. As you guys can see, if Protoss takes first place, place in this final week and Zerg takes third, Protoss will get two points and will be all tied up at nine. So this is basically the perfect situation for a tiebreaker. Uh, it just depends on whether Protoss can actually perform and... What's Terran going to look like this week? Because they brought a sick lineup as well. Yeah, they definitely did. Um, I think it's going to be one of those two squads. I mean, I guess there is a world in which Jadong somehow manages to carry, um, but I don't really see that in the cards at all. And Saxory and Gamo just aren't on the same kind of caliber as these other legends are. So yeah, I imagine it's going to be a Terran or a Protoss victory given this current lineup. But we'll see. It is KCM. Anything's possible. We've seen so much craziness over the seasons and weeks. So who knows, right? We've seen a lot of craziness on this map specifically. Sax are going to jump one of his drones over to the bottom lane. And I wonder if there's any rhyme or reason. Wait, where's this drone going? It's just checking. Okay. Yeah. Checking for a proxy. Going to get back. Go ahead and uh, drop that hatchery. I've seen a lot of Zerg players hop the drone over and then take a mineral patch or a, a bite of those minerals. Uh, so that they can open up the pathway a little bit faster. Saxory prioritizing the scouting, though. Maybe yeah. thinking that Storm was going to go for that. They, they, they send the drone a little bit prematurely for mm. two reasons. One, it allows them to either scout for a proxy or mine out the wall faster, like you say. But it's also so that if they fail in getting the drill, there should be enough time that they'll still get the hatchery on time. You know what right. I mean? If they, like, they fail hopping it over once or twice. So it gives you a little bit of wiggle room there in the early game. Stork's gone with a neck is first but both being on the same pathway means we're bound to butt heads pretty early on we'll see who ends up getting aggressive first as storks gone for a forge opener to drop that gateway now and see how much more greedy he can get uh if he's going to delay putting down that cannon or not he's finally sent out the probe and should be spotting the hatchery in a moment, but Saxory still has no idea that they are in the same lane. Right, and it's looking like it might be a two-hatch uh, Mutalisk build or something here out of Saxory. He went for a pretty fast gas, and I imagine he took Lair, not Link Speed, in this situation. I'm pretty sure that he would have um, done that, although I guess it's possible he would have taken Link Speed to attempt to run by here. We do see that in the meta a little bit here. Probe unable to stop and deny the wall being mined out, so we will see a flow of Zerglings able to gain access. Though it is going to be that Lair, like I thought it might be, uh, just straight into... I'm able to get the drone, um, the denial of the Probe Scout though so Stork going to be well aware of uh, what timings he needs to hit and maybe throwing down a cannon in these mineral lines at some point if Saxory does elect to go for a very fast two hatch Muir timing. Stork was actually looking to throw down a pylon uh, in between these patches or just below the patches in order to block the drones from coming through but Saxory did a pretty good job making sure that didn't happen. Oh! Trying to hop the probe out. Sneaky maneuver there, but Stork not able to pull it off. Loses that probe. He's got the information. Uh, like yeah. you said, though, he should be able to prepare for this accordingly. Yeah, it is, it is pretty annoying, um, especially with the fact that he has access to the natural expansion with Zerglings. Uh, so it means that Stork's build does have to be a little bit more cut than usual because he has to worry about Ling run buys and what have you. Mm -hmm. But now that he knows the fast layer is a factor, he probably probably isn't too worried about the Ling run by. He's probably not, has well well identified that this is going to be a two-hatch muta play into something else. So like maybe like a two-hatch muta play into a five-hatch setup or what have you. Yeah, he's not really respecting Ling run by at all. And Saxory isn't going to 
try for that type of play instead. Getting his third hatchery out over on the top path. And hasn't taken his second gas yet. Triple Stargate. Oh, wow. Hey, we, we saw this before in um, another tournament. Um, I, I, I'm not so sure about this saying. I mean, a two is more than enough. I think three is a little overkill. And sometimes two can come back to bite you and haunt you. So I don't really understand why Protoss players seem to be doubling down like this and going for the trio here. Seems a little excessive to me. Is there a possibility that he could go into carrier with three... Uh, three, not on two bases, Sam. Definitely not, but I'm thinking long term, is there a possibility that we could see carriers in this game? It is kind of a semi-island map. The reason why, okay, first, the reason why carriers are not very common, guys, is because of these right here. Scourge are so deadly against carriers. It's very, very hard to make them work against a professional Zerg player, so... Uh, generally, we just don't end up seeing them, but occasionally, right. occasionally on island maps, we have seen full-on air Protoss play. And look at this. Oh, gosh. Is he going to spot the triple Stargate? There it is. He sees it. Oh, man, that's massive. That's crazy. Okay, so, yeah, like a lot of tempo will probably be um, dwindled away now for Stork, unfortunately. Might even lose this one Corsair on the intercept as these other Scourge try and line up for it. Stork not able to break their ankles, so going to be losing that Corsair as well. This is what I was worried about. Like, if it gets scouted or, like, figured out, then you're kind of just, like, dead in the water, committing to something the Zerg player can then compensate for. And I don't know if this, if this will line up nicely for Stork now. I mean, Saxi will just sit back, make hatcheries, and just pump a lot of drones make a, a few hydrolisks here to have some kind of buffer but i guess there's a, there is a world where stork can be very active with these corsairs maybe supply box actually uh, you know start to chain kill some scourge when they're made in a panic i mean I, there is a world where stork can run away with the game i'm just not seeing it yeah it seems unlikely at this point stork looking to take a third base he's going to continue to produce corsairs he's moving out with a big group of them being a little bit tentative so far as Saxory back at home just keeps making hydras and sets up with this uh, spore colony. I guess the the really big problem with this play when you're going for three Stargate, there's no way that you can afford a DT as well. So right. he can just keep all of his overlords in one position. Uh-oh, going to lose a few. Yeah. Let's see. Well, this is what I was thinking about before. Mm. Like, there is a world in which, like, you know, we get a we get a supply block going, and there's not quite enough units out to prevent harassment. And Stork can like be a little bit annoying for a good minute here before uh, Saxory can stabilize again. And there is only one spore as well, so we can happily sit on top of that just for a few moments to maybe snipe another an overlord from the periphery and what have you. So I, honestly, this this could work out for Stork still. But we see some scourge being made. If the if the if the, if the, if the if the Corsairs don't get denied at this point of the, the junction, it is a little bit annoying for Saxory to restabilize here if he loses any more overlords. Ooh, he's just gonna dive right on top of that spore. Spores are great, but they're not the strongest. They're not the exact counter that you need. Even the Scourge get wiped out as they come in. Maybe one or two Corsairs go down, but a great dive from Stork, recognizing there was a gap in the defense from Saxory. He was moving his Hydras back in towards that main base. Now gonna loop around again and double robo okay that answers my question not going to be a full-on airplay instead he's going to go double robo into a bunch of reavers he's likely going to get disruption web as well and it's going to be an interesting game should we're probably going to see storks start to take bases in the bottom left corner top right corner just big island bases and with the third base online it gets really scary as a Zerg player. Yeah, I mean, it's basically Reaver Ser, but like done in a roundabout way where he's getting the third base before even getting the Reavers. But the double robo will allow him to catch up in those, those units quite quickly. Uh, trying to get some more Overlord kills, but not quite able to find them. And yeah, this three base economy set up with the Reaver Ser choice of composition is going to be really rough for Saxory to find a cost efficient way of engaging that. He's going to have to think a lot more tactically because he will probably lose out on just blind trades so we'll have to try and think of a way about maneuvering stalker well he has chosen the central path to try and make an attack happen 
There's a few cannons uh, at this base, but they're not on a high ground or anything, and there's no storm. He needs a reaver at this base before the hydras arrive, or we could just see Stork get knocked out. Saxory coming in with this blow. There's the reaver crawling out, slugging it over to this base, just barely in time. Will it be enough, though? Hydras are going to run forward, try to gun down that... Oh god, the Reaver's gone. That's it. <sighs> Man, this is rough. Yeah, the third base is pretty much dead in the water now. Desperately trying to try kill these Hydras of probes, but it's not going to happen. Particle Beam can't cut through that much HP worth of units. So, yeah, small counterattack here for Stork. Might be able to find some drone kills or denied mining time, but it doesn't really matter. The main writing on the wall is the fact that this Nexus is going to go down, and without the third base to power this build, it loses all of its potency. The wind is both literally and figuratively out of the sails of Stork now. Does manage to get in there and kill a few of these overlords. Trying to desperately supply block Saxory. Does manage to do so, but at the cost of so many of his units, there's no now real no chance of Stork getting back into this game. Yeah, those Corsairs are kind of the linchpin. Oh, and Burrow as well. Very smart move from Saxory to grab Burrow. Uh, you could go for drops as well. Um, he can basically do whatever he wants. He's going to decide to take a fourth base. Really secure his lead in this game. Stork is setting up a bunch of cannons and he has two reavers ready to defend this third. But can he hang on to it? I don't think so. Picking up the reavers and pulling them back, it's not going to be enough. He loses this shuttle. And even though he's going to get some great connections with these uh, scarabs, it's just going to result in another kill on this base and triple robotics facility. He's got the 3-3 build. Three robos, three stargates. I don't think that's I mean, the call, though. This seems like a build you'd do in, like, fastest or something. Doesn't seem like something you'd pull out on a 1v1 map, but it is Monty Hall, I guess. It, these builds can sometimes work, but this is really rough for Storks. Actually, he's done such a, like, Zerg 101 on dealing with this build, and to be fair, like, Stork did a very unusual approach to it. I, I feel like his unorthodox approach, uh, for some reason, seems to be a bit meta right now. A lot of Protosses are thinking that this three Stargate is a good way of playing on this map. Maybe there is some good functionality to it to help deal with the air superiority of the muta scourge and what have you and because you're not having to deal with early defenses it makes sense but i don't know like i'm not seeing much success in it and like we see here like Saxory just running rings around um stork with the bare minimal here as stork desperately tries to get a third up he needs this third base very badly he's gonna send a shuttle around the outside of the map if he has a probe in there drop it in the top right hand corner i feel like that's the best way to take a third yeah. it feels bad that stork opened up a pathway into his main oh lurkers being made in this corner things just getting worse and worse for stork if you can keep this as much of an island map as possible i feel like that's the best course of action but he's not able to do that. He's opened up a pathway into his main, and now he's got another area to defend. He's going to lose a Reaver. <sighs> he's not able to deal any damage on Saxory's side of the map, and he's going to start to lose a huge amount of probes as well. Good pullback from Stork. He can send all those probes over to his fresh third base, but this is just getting worse and worse. Saxory is getting light years ahead at this point. He's already got a yeah. big supply lead, and it's just going to I mean, get larger. He's got lurkers denying his mining in the main. He's only just now building an observatory, and Hydra's are on top of the production. It's pretty much over for Stork. I mean, this is going to be very refugee-style Protoss, maybe with a 0.001% win chance here. If maybe somehow a jet engine could fall on Saxory's house, there is a chance that Stork could win this game Donnie Darko-style, but at the moment, it's looking like just a little bit of a micro-battle to delay the inevitable. There is five Reavers with some um, Corsairs running into the natural expansion of Saxory now, trying to find some desperate compensation, but he's probably not going to achieve anything. Yeah, if you want to take good trades with the Reavers, you have to force the Hydras to line up, to stack together. He's not really getting the greatest trade here. He will end up winning this fight, it seems. But it's very close. One Reaver remains. 
This is really well done by Saxry. Like, he's always just had the right amount of Hydra and, like, the right amount of Micro to, like, split the Hydras and kill off the Reavers. He's done some very good tactical maneuvers in this game. Pretty impressed with him. <laughs> it's gonna burrow a Hydra behind this <laughs> mineral line. Make it to a Lurker like he did the other two. That's where those Lurkers came from, those um, Hydras that were burrowed at the top of the base earlier. So, That's yeah, right. he might make a Lurker at his Nastro again. <laughs> More bases coming up for Saxory. He's just going to keep extending this lead, making more and more Hydras and throwing them at Stork, never allowing him to regain his balance in this game. Stork has managed to get a third base up and running, but I doubt that that has a lot of defenses at it. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty sure there's almost nothing at that third base keeping it alive. It's, it'll just be a, the story of uh, Saxory finding that base. And Stork tapping out of this game. In fact, he's yeah. just going to run back into the main. This is the point where the, the Reaver should be strongest is as the Hydras are coming through that tight little choke. But it's actually not close enough. And the Hydras end up getting through that choke, splitting it up pretty effectively against these Reavers, which will end up going down. This main base has been completely ravaged. And this last reaver yeah. will end up falling as well. Nothing he can do about it. Stork, gonna have to tap out. GG, yeah. wow. Yeah, I didn't Rough. expect Stork to go down already, but there it is. Saxory getting the first win this week. Hopping into game number two, Saxory versus Royal here on Kickback. I've been liking this map a lot for Terran versus Zerg because we get to experience some pretty interesting, crazy Zerg styles. It feels like players are pretty much sold that that is the way to do it as a Zerg player versus Terran. Well, it certainly seems that way. Um, we see a very fast uh, center 8 racks coming out from Royal. Wonder how this is going to pan out because Saxory is pretty good at um, blocking 8 racks with his drones and what have you. I'm curious if he'll do like a 12 12 12 build and then really be lagging behind his timing so he'll have to be very on top of his drone micro or whatnot. I imagine he'll be relatively greedy. I can't. So it's possible we will see a 12 12 12 into a 2.5 patch from Saxory, which will make him very vulnerable to this A-Rex. The 8 Rax is built on the left hand side of the map, though, unfortunately. It's not that much closer to the base of Saxory than just the natural. Like a, a barracks just outside the natural of Royal uh, would be kind of comparable in distance. Now, Saxory is scouting the middle. I think he's just barely going to miss this. This would be the typical location for an 8 racks to be placed down right in the middle uh, between those mineral patches. But Saxory going to completely miss this. He sends the drone down to the bottom left. Scouting cross map is interesting, but he's not going to find anything. Yeah, this is really well placed barracks fair from Royal, and uh, yeah, I, I understand Saxory completely. I would, I would, I would be, I would feel safe doing 12, 12, 12 and cross map scouting as well. But now he's going to be very deceived. He does at least know that it's cross positions with this cross map scout, so he will be a little bit cautious that it could just be a, a more standard 10 racks or 8 racks pressure play that's not so far forward, but. Yeah, now that he sees there's nothing in the wall. Okay, he sees it with the drone. Okay, so he'll, he will have some time to react now. So, um, but he did go 12, 12, 12. So he does have to rely fully on drones now. Has to be very careful. Just try and throw down a, a creep Conley. I'm, I'm, I'm sure this is just a sandbag and buy time here because uh, the, the bunker will come up right on the right on schedule and we'll have to see the drone pull. Drones being pulled. Lings are in production now. Sunken will start. This bunker, he might be able to deny it for a little bit longer. He's going to lose one drone. Nice target there, but he kills the SCV. That's good enough. Doesn't really yeah. need to do much more than that. He's going to surround these Marines, which are trying to pick off one last drone. He does get one more drone. So two drones total. Not quite enough for what yeah. uh, Royal did. And you know what? This sunken is, is big brain because that sandbagged this attack and it's going to be uh, you know necessary to deal with the vulture right. as well. 
Right, and honestly, you can't usually do that. Um, like this, uh, the only reason this was a good option for Sakshi was he scouted it a little bit early, and he also had the shorter run distance from his mineral line to place that sunk in there, obviously. So, yeah, a really nice tactical response from him. Looks like it'll probably pan up. Beautiful surround on this vulture almost. Does manage to get down to the south, though, and there isn't a wall in on the bottom, so we'll be able to get it um, away safely if he needs to. Uh, does try and pounce for us around again. Not able to do so. Does kill the SUV that's building that starport, though, and delaying the timing is going to be a very annoying will maybe catch this other SCV as well does manage to clean that up so really denying denying the timing of this but um wraith is going to be critical and he's going to catch the vulture he's blocked it with his own vulture from behind royal's in a little bit of trouble now he's lost way too much value to these just simple zerglings that didn't even have speed for a while oh zaxer is on fire that link control was just crazy oh double starport follow-up such an interesting move from Royal. He's trying to be so sneaky with this. Setting up a second yeah. starport over on that high ground down in the bottom left. It's so counterintuitive to the way that we've seen most players on this map play is uh, highly macro focused. Royal is just going for all out aggression. So far, it hasn't worked well, but he's going to try a run by. Oh man, the Hydras are just right there and ready. He won't be able to do anything with these vultures. This is huge for Saxory. Yeah. Yeah, I've been pretty impressed with Saxory's early game defense. I, I did suspect that he would be ready for any kind of shenanigans out of Royal. He is usually quite adept at his early game defense. I think that's one of the reasons you saw him rise from the, the muck, so to speak, and like managed to survive while coming up against all the pros. Like he was one of the Zergs that actually was well-rounded as well as a strong macro player and could handle these early game pressures. But look at this, not able to get any Marines into the bunk yet. Maybe, okay, can't quite catch the Marine, but I don't think it matters. I think already like Saxory is taxing Royal a little bit here. Uh, there's, there is a world where we just see a massive pump of Hydras and we, we try and bunker bust this. Um, Saxory may not commit to that. He's probably trying to weigh his odds right now. Like, is there a way I can just pounce on top of this and kill a CVs or do I just like, like, you know transition and like play it like a pvz where you kind of like you know hedge your bets do i want to like force a, a defensive risk reaction here and just transition or do i want to commit to it probably see a transition i can't imagine he'll commit to this but we will see a string of hydras still be produced i'm not sure if he'll be able to figure out this two port rave timing or not he might still think it's one 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 i think he's got just enough hydras to hold on against two port rave there is going to be a moment yeah. where the uh, the Wraiths could potentially fly into the main cloak and kill a bunch of drones. Did Sax3 opt to grab Burrow, though? That can be a very strong counter against what Royal is doing. In fact, he's going to start to move out right as the Wraiths are coming in. So this is a little bit interesting. Royal is going to get the opportunity to scout this. Uh, but, you know, Saxory is just going to turn around, head back home, start to protect his overlords and get some units over to defend these drones as well. He needs to bring some more Hydras up here. Two drones have fallen already. He has to keep that overlord alive. If that goes down, he could lose control of his natural. Yeah, you need roughly like one Hydra per Wraith to like kind of guarantee not losing too much. But once they get to five Wraiths or more, then they start one shying your drones and it becomes a nightmare. So you kind of want to put the pressure onto the Terran player and deny him any possibility. He does kill one of those paper planes, dives on top of the bunker. The repair is too slow. It's going to crack the egg and the wall is now exposed. SUV is desperately trying to hold that line, but unable to do so. Wraiths pew-pewing with their burst lasers where well, there's too much HP in this chunk squad of Hydras and they're going to pretty much devastate state this SEV line even if somehow Royal does hold this this is too much damage to the economy saying so many SEVs are gonna die so many SEVs are going down it's shocking to me that Royal didn't uh, respond more seriously to the number of hydras that he was seeing he didn't pull the SEVs yeah. to the wall uh, on time he didn't have a tank out or anything like that he was still just flying around with his wraiths thinking that Saxory just wouldn't attack uh, with the fact that there were, you know, some cloak race sitting above uh, the Hydras dealing damage to them this slowly, though, it's not going to be enough to deny. And GG is called. Yeah, you, you, you can't just hold off that many Hydras with five wraiths. <laughs> I know that they're invisible and they can deal damage, but 
They're not going to be able to kill all of those Hydras fast enough, and he breaks through that front. A technical game there from Royal, but maybe he got a little bit too fancy with the footwork and ends up getting tripped by Saxory. We've lost two players so far. Stork and Royal are both down. Zerg is surprisingly strong this week, and it's being <laughs> carried by Saxory. That is uh, an interesting development. Best is going to be sent out on Minstrel. We'll see what kind of plays Best wants to go for. Is he going to pull out some shenanigans as well? I would hate to see another Protoss player go like two, two Stargate and, and end up losing. Mm. It's been a bit frustrating I mean, lately. We were saying earlier about um, we not being able to see Jadong carrying it, but it seems like Saxory can carry it, which is kind of crazy to think about. That he's already like you know two games up, smashing things right now. Like he's honestly quite quite impressed by him. I would love to see how he handles himself going forward. He's usually able to to hang um, even in the most chaotic of moments. So usually it's hard to catch him off guard and throw something crazy his way. He's played so many ladder games and grinded so much. Well, here we see a very sneaky probe scout that's going to be just barely spotted by the overlord. So um, I think he might be able to get the drone to the ramp in time. Oh, not quite. So the probe will get in and scout see this pool coming. It is a nine pool with an extractor trick. So he's hoping to put on a little pressure to best, but we'll just see that forge thrown down. Uh, he'll probably get two cannons to deal with these early lings and... This is not really going to deal much damage because of this nice scout from Best. Yeah. Yeah, this is a beautiful scout from Best. And, like, Saxory almost shut this scout down as well. Like, he had it timed out pretty perfectly where he almost denied the scout. And then that would have been a little bit of a frustration from Best. He would have had to hedge his bets to even have a chance at uh, being optimized against this. Does throw down the pylon to, to, to disrupt the, the hatchery location. Saxory will happily place that at the third base, though, and will ignore this pylon for the time being because he expects a uh, council will come anyway because the only way that best can afford to make the nexus after the cannon so interesting um from both players here they seem to uh, have every everything kind of mapped out already with each other i wonder if they've played enough games with with each other that we're seeing a very um unique kind of set of mind games from both of them perhaps that's the case best i would love to see him throw down a pylon at the natural <clears throat> Looks like that's not going to happen, but uh, if you guys have ever played Zerg on the ladder, you know that two lings does not kill a pylon before it finishes. So if you build a pylon in the natural, where do you even throw down your next hatchery? As a, a, you just sit there and wait, maybe send two more drones or something to kill that? Two lings is not enough. You need four. And Saxory, he was a little greedy there. He's not going to get punished for it. Only building those two lings, he's going to get away with. Um, why, why do you think, Shun, that they don't build a pylon? Like, why wouldn't you block the natural? After you force the third down to the bottom left... It depends on how your lanes. builds. It depends on how your build lines up, right? Like in that instance, like it stops the nexus for too long. But if there's a situation where it doesn't delay your nexus too long, like say you were able to skip cannon because it didn't win like uh, early pool, then that's like you can optimize there and like you know commit to the pylon without having to cancel because you're not that behind economically if you do that. Whereas if you are trying to min max because you're worried about the early pool, then you can't really do that. You need to hit your timing still. I don't know, I might be... Well, I, I am definitely kind of retarded, but I feel like this is uh, something that hasn't really been explored by Protoss too much, is when the Zerg player makes only two lings, the pylon block is so strong, it's crazy. You yeah. delay that by so much, and even just delaying your Nexus by a few seconds, I, I feel like it would be worth it if you can prevent the 
second or the the third hatch from being placed at the natural for an extra like minute and a half i mean you, i guess it makes sense from like looking from an outsider's perspective but maybe on paper it just doesn't work out that way like mm. you're just not making two probes at a time so you just event you just don't scale quickly enough because of how delayed your nexus is it just doesn't become worth it i don't know exactly how the math works out on that but i'm sure that it, it's probably if there is some way of like figuring out a more, a more optimized path it, we're, we're certainly a long way off figuring that out and i'm sure it, it isn't just a pylon being blocked on the hatchery spot i'm sure there's some other things that would need to be fine-tuned as well well enough um deliberation deliberation yeah we've got zealots on the map being taken out so far best has been unable to do any damage with those only killing off a couple of lings and throwing away some of his early game units that could have been useful for the follow-up you know plus one attack uh, zealot timing saxory's deflected everything pretty uh, easily with finesse and is now getting into his additional hatcheries, getting his drone count up. Does he have that spire done just about, I think? Let's take a look. There it is. The spire is done. Some Scourge are about to pop. We'll push back this Corsair in a moment. He'll just barely get the kill on that Overlord, but now needs to bail out immediately. Hydroden over at the third. Gonna try and hide that from the Corsair. Maybe try to convince him that Mutas are coming and do some sort of uh, attack at the front. What do you think, Shun? Yeah, I'm not too sure. I mean, I, I kind of want him to to at least threaten a kind of um, Ogre Zerg this game. I mean, Sactory is very good at representing Ogre Zerg, even when he's not coming to it fully. I, th I feel like we need to see some kind of like pressure be applied to Best, just to keep Best in check. I don't think Best is the kind of player you want to like just leave to be chill the entire game long. Um, Sactory does have a very powerful macro engine behind him. He is one of the, perhaps one of the only non pro, non like high echelon pro zergs that could hold their own against best just sitting back and doing nothing. But I still worry a little bit for him. On this map, like, there's so many times where zerg feel super comfortable. They get into 9 10 hatchery late game production. Everything seems fine. Will suddenly just get cracked open instantly because of like the, the just getting charged down one lane unexpectedly. It's a tough map and can be difficult to maneuver your forces, that is for sure. Zealots are moving out, but there's a good number of Hydras already at the front. They're going to take this fight. Scourge do get wiped out, but the Zealots are going to get tracked down. And this is a lot of Hydras coming. I think this is a five hatchery bust that we're seeing right before the Templar come online. Because uh, if you if you saw there, the, the Scourge flew into the main base. He saw the exact timing on the Templar archives. And so has this opportunity where maybe he can just bust right through. Best is going across the map with his Corsairs. Gonna try to kill a few overlords and supply block Saxory, which actually could be a very big deal considering this is kind of a do or die moment. One yeah. DT coming out to fight these Hydras, but an overlord is with this. Overlord speed is done. Can he actually break through? I really hope that Sachi's making lurker aspect behind this so that he can contain if this fails. But I don't know if he's he's thought about that. He, he's, he's pulling the probes. Does a good job of drilling onto these hydras, buying some time. The DT is still existing, but there is still two um, overlords that haven't been picked off, so they can't really get on top of these hydras and deny. So there might be a possibility that we can deny this upgrade for Sachi, which could be a big deal if he just just kills that forge and denies the upgrade timing. That would be very frustrating indeed for Best to have to deal with. He's only just now got some high templars there will be another 10 or 15 seconds before storm and energy is ready so there will be a timing to pick this upgrade off and deny that so really frustrating for best going forward it's exactly how i wanted to see sax replay to apply pressure the best early on He's done a good job breaking through this front wall and is now transitioning into a more macro fo focused play oh dark templar sneaking out on the map Definitely wants to track that down before it lands itself. Some kills in one of these bases in the bottom left or prevents him from taking uh, a well-timed fourth base because that's the direction that we're heading. Saxory 
like you said, has a serious macro engine behind him. He's very good uh, in big macro games. He's picked off the DT. He's going to be taking the hatchery in the bottom left. His drone saturation is getting there. It's not quite there yet, but it's getting there. And a second Evo Chamber on the way. We're definitely going to hive this game, I think. Shun, this yeah, is a uh, late game Saxory, if I've ever seen yeah, it. Yeah. yeah, it's looking like that. And he has done the like prerequisite pressure before going into this. So I was worried if he was just going to sit back and do this without any kind of pressure being applied to best. But sniping the upgrade and like you know doing what he did, I actually kind of like this the way he's approaching this game. And um, it's not it's not like the lurker contain follow up that I thought he might be going for. But this is this is very reasonable and uh, conservative and should give him probably the best odds. Uh, propelling himself into a late game 10 hatchery plus production and uh, allow him to use his skills to full fruition here and uh, kick it up into the highest macro gear possible. Well, the difficulties of playing on Minstrel have not gone away just because he's put this right. pressure on. He's still going to have to deal with the awkwardness of defending these different lanes and uh, trying to prevent best from just sending in counterattacks everywhere. Uh, I wonder if he's going to move lurkers out immediately to kill these eggs. I would really like to see that uh, because I feel there's so many times, it's so common for Zerg players to get tripped up by the eggs uh, and you know prevented from combining their forces at critical moments. Uh, so far, he hasn't done that. He's sending lurkers forward right now. Just two. Does he have drop to potentially drop into the main, or what is he doing with these two lurkers? Yeah, I, I'm wondering. I think he is going to do that. Yes, he's just loaded them up now. He's going to do exactly that, but he will probably need to do some kind of like bait and switch at the front. Yeah, he's going to show lurkers at the front and try and get his attention focused on the front a little bit more. See if he can maybe bait out the goons and observers into engaging this so he's distracted and the lurkers can slip in right at that moment. Here he comes, dropping the lurkers in the mineral line right as this attack comes in. How many kills are we going to get? In that mineral line, he's missing it. Oh, oh gosh, all the <laughs> Corsairs flying. There's a little bit too much going on. Yeah, this lurker, eight kills already. This this one over here, one kill so far, will end up losing its life. Pretty That's mistake decent. From that's a mistake from Sakshi, by the way. He should have mm. unloaded the, the Lurker in the bottom right corner, not the yeah. top right corner of those mineral patches. You could have done way more damage. Potentially, for sure. So, uh, a little bit uh, an uncharacteristic mistake for our Observer to, to miss that, but uh, you can tell that Best was getting flustered there with all the stuff that was going on. The Corsairs flying in and just losing their lives for free. Pretty rough. Saxory has not gone to Hive. He's just focusing on a layer man play. Yeah. Loading up it's more. Cool. More and more lurkers and hydras. And gonna send them into the main. The army is out of position right now. Bess is in a weird spot where he's thinking about attacking down a different lane, but here comes that drop into the main. This is going to deal a lot of damage, I think, Shun. Ooh, and he's hooing and hiring with his army. There's pathing issues. The eggs are blocking. He can't do the counterattack efficiently. There is some high templars in position to deny the drops, though, so two blanket storms will come out, making the initial drop pretty unfortunate for Saxby, but there should be enough units in reserve in the remainder of those overlords to start coming out in droves and starting to kill all of those probes once the lurkers can finally borrow. The counterattack's been pretty efficient though so many hydras getting absolutely decimated by those sonic storms can he get onto the top of the zerg production there's a few rallied units desperately trying to get in a position to prevent best from getting on top of the production there's not that much infantry left for best as well i think he's just barely cleaned up enough of best army that he won't be able to get on top of his drone lines at least oh man saxory lost so many hydras just coming down that ramp oh it's so painful to witness as a zerg player Best gets some amazing connections on some of those storms, and now these overloads are going to fly into the cannons. He gets supply blocked. This could be lights out for Saxory. He's played a great game so far, but Best, I think he just took the better of that trade. He dealt with the, the drop very well, and he got an amazing fight over by that third base.
Yeah, I thought I thought Best lost a lot more to that drop in the main base with the Lurkers borrowing. Maybe he didn't lose enough of his probes and managed to get them all out to safety with a transfer. Now he's looking pretty healthy. 130 to 90 supply in Sanctuary's blocked. Just now becoming unblocked right as he's being attacked. Does have a decent-ish Lurker setup here. Might be enough to buy time. Some tactical Lurker eggs blocking to both soak up phase disruption shots, bug out the AI, and also prevent um, too much uh, body blocking um, from, uh, from um, Best being able to transfer any of his units further, but he's going to have enough storm to skirmish of Saxory here. I don't know, like, the supplies have just kind of clenched up again. I feel like Saxory traded extremely well there. I'm, I'm still liking his position. I don't feel like Best has done enough defensively to be in a great spot. I mean, the third base is coming online at 15 minutes, saying, and granted, like, this is still Battlezerg setup, but it doesn't really matter. He's still going to have, like, uh, um, everything's going to be on curve. Like, he's just now taking his third, so we just we just take our Queen's Nest, and relatively speaking, Saxory He's still looking okay. I agree. Saxory is looking all right, especially with that Queen's Nest coming down. The Battlezerg style is kind of a momentum play. You really have to keep the Protoss on their back foot and stop them from expanding uh, for themselves. But Saxory has lost the momentum in this game, and now the army making its way down into the bottom left hand corner. I don't think that he can save this. He's going to have to run all the drones away. Send them over to that brand new base that he's just setting up and maybe take another base on the other side of the map. I'm not sure though if he can even hold on this high ground. This is a big army and if it makes it into position in time, running into that, uh, running into those storms is just going to be a death sentence. Sacks were going for the counter attack, but Bess is already on his way back across the map. Has the storm ready to fight this. He does lose the Templar right away. There's three cannons, a couple of dragoons holding on i think that saxer can hold this but we'll just have to see or sorry best will have to hold we'll be able to hold this yeah some tactical um ai eggs being thrown down to try and buy some time for um some tactical play but not able to get into position quick enough and it's not enough uh, unit mass to really um, accomplish anything here for saxery some beautiful storms from best as well getting such high cost efficiency which is keeping the gap in the supplies uh, where he wants them but there's still going to be a huge flood of battles uh, coming his way until this hive transition finally is underway but um i, I don't know best can still weather the storm like with, with enough storms here and um maybe tactical uses of these dark templars getting some drone kills and what have you could be enough to to have a very strong late game uh, position needs to get this fourth base online soon and keep skirmishing with the Zerg more or less non-stop because there will be such a high count of Hydras and Lurkers that are being made by Saxory. And it's only a matter of time for the Hive kicks in. I haven't seen the upgrades for a little while. I haven't seen the Hive yet either. There should be Defiler tech uh, getting started soon. Another big load up from Saxory. It looks like he's going to put pressure into the main while Best army rotates around to the back of these minerals he does pull away from that position but even just sending one templar over to that area try to get some storms on those high grounds would be strong here comes that drop there are dragoons ready and waiting a lot of lurkers being dropped out but they they burrow right on top of each other shouldn't these storms are gonna be insane Oh, every Zerg player does this. It's so painful to watch. Why are we like this? Oh, man. I don't know what you can say or do about that, but we got to stop bunching our lurkers up like that, guys. And Oh, man. That is painful to watch as a Zerg player. Ugh. It's like watching like a guy getting kicked in the balls or something. It makes you wince in like, empathy, you know? Yeah, it's like watching uh, Terran players siege 10 tanks on top of each other when the opponent has storms it's so brutal they've just thrown away a huge huge amount of supply each of those lurkers three supply plus all of the money that went into them 125 gas oh it's so painful to lose that much potency from your army to just a couple of storms that Storm is a very good unit, guys. Another Storm gonna go down. He's gonna take out like eight Hydras with this one Templar. It's insane, but 
Best is getting into this very nice position behind the mineral patches. Now he can deny this base. However, Saxu's already retaken bottom left, so he's not quite out of it yet. He's still in this game. He's still got chances. It's just Best is definitely taking control and putting Saxory on the back foot. Right, and it's going to be a matter of time for this main and natural expansion we mined out. He's resaturating it now because uh, he was um, trying to mine out as slowly as possible. But now that he's been denied mining at this um, fifth base, he's going to have to be forced to start mining out this main and natural, which means he'll be reduced to lower and lower amounts of bases worth of economy. And he won't quite have enough production in his wheelhouse that he needs to overwhelm best. Um, best, likewise, though, having to deal with these counterattacks, not able to get this fourth base online just yet. And he's main down on his main and natural, so if he can deny this fourth base for long enough, maybe something can be done here for Saxory. The only one base worth of economy coming in for best at the moment with that delayed third, but it will be alive and churning for quite some time due to being taken so late. One base economy, it sounds so limiting for it. Uh, the Protoss player, but it is still reasonable to keep making yeah. armies and fighting uh, as long as you're trading properly and utilizing your storms. Best can stay out on the map and keep denying this extra base. It's time to take something else for Saxory. Maybe 12 o'clock is the right choice. Yeah, I, th I think maybe. Um, I I'm liking Saxory's efforts, though. Like, there is a chance where he actually does deny this fourth base. He's doing a good job killing all these high templates, and now maybe get the denial on this Nexus yet again. Like, slowing this down this long is a pretty big deal. If he can keep doing this for another minute or two, this will be a, a huge deal because Best will eventually become mined out on this this third base despite taking it so late at 15 minutes. It won't last forever, especially now that it's like triple saturated with all the other bases becoming. Um, uh, uh, diminished so it, honestly like there is a world where sax turns this game around and completely demolishes best still saying i think you've, you've counted um sax out a little bit prematurely i may have done so sax pushing up with a lot of lurkers best has been forced to pull back his army and set it up in a position that defends the top right but he's no longer able to prevent sax from uh, mining over at his fresh fifth base. This is so many forces. My goodness. Saxory yeah, hitting his stride now, and he has a defiler as well. So this army is not going to die easy with the dark swarms covering these lurkers. That's going to take a lot of storm to eat his, its way through. This counterattack at the same time is brilliant. He's controlling so many different things right now, and he's going to deny this fourth base again it's crazy it's kind of wild i mean he has lost a lot of units though he has got so much mass but cramming it all into a tight space does mean it will get cleaned up just that little bit more cost efficiently although with that critical mass maybe just barely able to punch through the defenses and with the tactical egg setup he is getting a lot of the uh, work done killing those pros but hasn't actually denied the fourth base uh, this time around some workers have gone down this has been very frustrating um for best to clean up but it does seem like best has almost barely managed to deny this fourth base from going down and the, the trades are honestly still going better for Saxory though it's 110 to 100 supply so if Saxory can keep the gas down all the way before he becomes too mined out he will be able to technically kill best he hasn't got he's got a little bit of time left to do it and good, good job tracking these two chagoons on the left here. Uh, any pickup is going to be huge for Saxi because it's going to come down to the wire because he's almost mined out on some of these bases, whereas Bess is now churning two bases again. This is where things get very scary for the Protoss player. He's stretched out all the way to the top right with all of his forces being sent to that location. Drops now into the main or attacks straight up into the natural would be very difficult for Bess to stop. Uh, while simultaneously keeping his bases alive in the top right. He just doesn't have the resources anymore. He's behind in supply. 110 is all that he can muster. And Saxory 
no doubt going to hit multiple locations at the same time. Bass is going to really struggle to do anything uh, aside from survive for the next few minutes. Yeah. Uh, and there's so many units that are coming out of Sactory's side of the map. He's so powerful with his macro when he finally does kick into high gear. It has taken him a long time to do so, but um, one or two good storms, though, can clean up a lot of these forces if they're not in good positions. Does need to start spreading out his units like we see here to, get, uh, to force as much drainage on that um, storm well as possible. Beautiful Plague as well, going to really start diminishing the value of these trades that Best can handle now that he can start churning out those plagues over and over again. We'll basically be relying purely on the shields of the units and most of those upgrades in there are in armor and weapons, so they're actually pretty brittle once you get away with those uh, hit points using Plague. Best is going to try to counterattack over towards top center while Saxory moves slowly into position. Uh, separating the third base from the natural. If he gets a big lurker field uh, in this spot, best will be even it'll be even more difficult for best to swap between the defense of the top right and the defense of the main. And I think that Saxory will likely load up a bunch of energy on these defilers and press into the natural here soon because there's only cannons defending that area. Just a couple of dark swarms and a group of lings will break through that very, very quickly and force Bess to run down this ramp into lurkers under dark swarm, giving him a much better trade against these forces. So far, Bess casting out a lot of storms he's managed to create a pretty massive archon army uh, out of all of these templars that he's been able to put together and that is, i mean that's so many archons at this point he is going to be able to hold on very strongly against lings and uh, lurkers running up this ramp but is it even going to matter long term saxory has so much going for him behind the scenes he's got Another base going down in the bottom left. Uh, he can start to take more bases. 12 o'clock he can take. He's coming through with a counter of Lings to the north of this position. The Archon army is starting to go down. There's so many lurkers in this field. It's crazy. I, I don't... I don't oh, yeah. I mean, it is still technically three bases versus two bases. So there is still a world that best can stabilize if there's too inefficient of trades for Saxi, but right now this is a great position to be in. The Archons are almost necessary. They, they, you need some kind of plague resistance, and the, the, the Archons provide you plague resistance because they're pretty much shields only. Now, though, look at this counter-offensive from Best clearing out most of that lurker field. This is what I was a little bit concerned about. There is a world where there are some efficiencies where Best can restabilize and i mean even though like sacri sacri is growing a little bit by taking that additional base that's that's just you know compensating for the fact that the third just got mined out so he's still on the exact same amount of production the entire time trying to close out the game has been unsuccessful in doing so for the time being so a bit of a weird situation he's now looking like he's wanting to set up to uh, just chill for a bit and um, re-macro up and maybe take another base here at the six there's so many different pathways that he has to cover. Is he going to be able yeah. to defend properly if he's, you know, forced to uh, maneuver and hold back all of these different attacks that can come from so many different angles? If Best rotates, for example, and goes through the bottom lane or the, the uh, lower lane, oh god, he's just going to attack into this? I don't know about attacking right into where all the lurkers are. There's not many lurkers, for example, at that fresh base in the bottom left. Uh, why not attack into that? 28 kills on this Archon. Holy absolute hero unit there. This is just a testament to Best and how well he's been trading throughout this game. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I don't blame him for trying. Oh, he catches the drone at six as well. I don't blame him for trying to come in here, though, because like he smelt a little bit of weakness. He was like, okay, you had the gas pedal pressed down the entire time a moment ago. Now you're suddenly like letting up. That means because you, you're a little bit weak right now. Mm. So he's, he wanted to come over here and see if he could punish Saxory, but luckily Saxory had enough in the tank that he could just set up a massive lurker field here. Very, very good use of um, Saxory to identify that 
he needed to let off the gas pedal at that precise moment because if he kept going for any longer and then tried to stop, he wouldn't have had enough forces left over to set up to deal with any kind of counters that best threw his way. Now trying to take the six o'clock finally again, but there is another uh, force coming down here to this, to deny that potentially. Does catch two of these Archons at 12 o'clock though. These are great pickoffs for Saxory. These Archons are so good in isolation. Um, if you can pick them off, it feels so good as a Zerg player. Once they're like completely stacked up in a massive uh, army, they're really devastating. Denial on the six o'clock once again. Best is starting to hammer these different areas and prevent them from being taken by Saxory. This is getting a little bit scary. If Best gets another base online, he's going to be able to extend this game for a long time. And his bases will be very close to the fresh expansions of Saxory. Unless he wants to take the middle of the map, maybe that's the call. Saxory could potentially take this middle. Uh, and that, that will provide him a lot of gas. Not that many minerals, but it gives him a, a good amount of potential. Uh, as this game goes into the very latest stages, this lurkers are going to be a little bit too stacked. He really needs to spread these out once again. Set up that really nice lurker field with a bunch of dark swarms covering it. He's pushing in towards this fresh base. Gets a beautiful plague on the zealots as well. The lurkers can't really push into this just yet. Best needs a little bit more time to gather some more resources to be able to break that position. This spot, though is deadly if he can hold that th this area right out in front of the natural best is gonna have a very hard time uh, winning this game yeah i think so sand but um really really well done from saxory to come in there just before the cannons could get online borrow those lurkers up against the mineral wall and then flank it with a big wedge formation to get between the rally point now though the counterattack from best getting on top of this massive cluster of units just a few storms could be enough to spell disaster for saxory but they're a little bit out of position not quite able to get in range quickly enough and saxory able to disperse his units so they don't just get absolutely gobbled up did lose quite a large portion of them but still looking pretty healthy in the supply deficit so unfortunately for best i don't think he's going to be able to close out the game on sexually anytime soon and as far as things are going right now it looks like sexually setting up to win this game just uh, very slowly going to be grinding best down to a nub over these next few minutes if he can Saxory is going to take the middle. I love to see it. He's got this lurker set up here to... Oh, another great plague on these zealots. Going to try and run in and just kill everything. Uh, a lot of these zealots are going to end up dying. Great trade for Saxory, but takes out that critical position. Best is going to now be free to flow his army out onto the map. Reinforce those positions. Where can he take a base, though? Maybe top center? Is that a possibility? Uh, I mean, honestly, uh, yes, but uh, he probably will take top center. Like we see the probe coming up here now, but uh, I, I don't. I'm not. I'm not too sure what what Saxory's game plan is going to be. He, there's no way that he can handle like best counter attacking multiple lanes at the same time. So I feel like it's up to Saxory here to deny this base from going up. He has to stop this Nexus going up. Yeah, he has to keep that base in the center alive at the same time. The setup on across this bridge is, is nasty. You don't want to be coming across that bridge anytime soon, I don't think, as best. But as long as you can hold your side of the bridge and keep control over this top part, this top lane on the map, I think he could potentially hold this base. He's actually going to take a nexus on the opposite side of these minerals, funnily enough. It is a mineral-only base, so it doesn't really matter that much. The minerals, uh, they're still good, but just the mining will be a little bit less efficient. He could use any sort of mining at this point, though. He doesn't care where he gets it from. Just a little bit of mineral income is going to help best stay in this game. Yeah, he's also got quite a high probe saturation on very few bases, so even mining awkwardly, he'll still be able to get a pretty high yield. Uh, the continuous plagues are really going to chip away at him, but like I was saying a few moments ago, this, the counterattacks on these different lanes are going to be a big problem for Saxory. Uh, he might lose a lot of drones here. does notice, though, he does the pot to pull them away. If there was a storm with that army, he could have lost so many drones there, but unfortunately, Saxory was on top of things, saw the, the army coming in and was able to pull his way. does deny the mining here, though, and this is really tough 
tough to come in here and deal with this as Zerg, though. This choke point is so frustrating, and they can attack from over the wall on top of your drones that are mining. So now it's actually distracted with defending down here, and he's going to have to be worrying about Best breaking through on the northern uh, threshold as well. Um, but has denied Best from taking that gas expansion, which is critical. Um, the, the gas income will be a problem for Best. He's making mainly Zealots, and against the... Oh, that's a beautiful play. Against mainly Lurkers, like, Zealots are really poor. So I think maybe Saxo will win out on trades here. Saxo is slowly grinding down Best, but Best has managed to hold another base. Doesn't have control over the opposite side of those minerals for now, but... As long as Saxory doesn't send lurkers over there, he's going to keep mining away happily. 3-3 three, three is done. No plus 3 attack upgrade on those lings just yet, but this is a desperate struggle. Both players really having a hard time putting out any units at this point because the bases are quickly mining out everywhere on both sides of the map. Saxory holding this middle. Will best be able to break that? I highly doubt it. A Dark Templar making its way into a mineral line. This could be the help that Best needs to get himself back in this game to make things even once again. He's going to kill so many drones wow. here, Shun. Every oh drone goes down. Days. That's 10 drones. Oh, oh. This could be just the tempo swing that Best needs. Also, supply looking a bit in his favor now with those drones falling. If he can deny Saxory taking this base and then take it himself, Best will put himself into a great position but still Saxory hasn't been denied from securing this uh, foothold in the 12 o'clock looks like best is going to try and rotate around see if he can get on top of this clump of units at the rally point not able to do so though Saxory able to respond quickly enough he wants to try and get a pounce attack where he can wedge into a position before Saxory can respond and get some preemptive storms and wreck Saxory that way but not able to do so just yet Saxory able to keep on top of things and keep things locked down on the periphery beautiful storm there though catching a lot of that clump of units exactly the kind of skirmish that best needs and is looking for here yeah he's got a supply lead for the first time for quite a while saxory his income has been dwindling he really needs that 12 o'clock to come online here soon mining in the middle of the map is not very efficient but it is giving him a few very important resources just coming straight across this bridge is pretty insane best just gonna try to bust right through this can it is it possible can he actually break wow, in Saxory has so many units coming in from different angles but this archon count cannot be denied not enough hydras in this force to maybe cut these down this is wild saying like how is he making it look like his pvts where it looks like an unbreakable position but he somehow still cracks it like a nut anyway big massive gorilla arms just crushing through there is a counter attack though here at this mineral only which will be very frustrating to deal with there's only cannons there no templar support so those three lurkers will pay dividends and get this the expansion completely cleaned up here probably but that's a big devastating loss for Saxory as well down to 77 supply with no real income right now besides two of these bases that aren't actually Actually mining at 12 o'clock and this mineral only so as a gas expansion rather at the, the, the 12 position this is really rough us actually oh no i okay he manages to get the drones to run away uh he needs to send these drones up to 12 o'clock there's a fresh base up there that best hasn't been able to deny this is his last hope in this game can he somehow hold on to that base in top center and destroyed this nexus he gets the nexus which is massive but there's still a little bit of mining for best in top right and he has an overwhelming army that could potentially just come up here and smash this base i think that best may have just done it there with that last push yeah crazy that he busted right through that position absolutely yeah. insane yeah that was the point where basically he sealed the deal and was pretty much set up to win the game. Really wild stuff. He just barely had enough left over to crack through it and completely tempo swing the entire game. Really, really impressive stuff from Best. He's basically been on the back foot most of this game. Finally had like enough wind in his sails to start pummeling back at Saxory and did some pretty knockout damage as well. Just 58 supply to 124. Victory is all but certain now for Best. He just needs to hold things down and not make any critical errors.
Scourge coming in and sniping off a few of these observers. Pretty annoying stuff for best, as that means that he can no longer push through this position. Great plague there as well, softening up that army. This is a lot of lurkers to break through. So best can't be too uh, cavalier right. running into this army, but the force that he's managed to accumulate on that right hand side, it, it just it can't be stopped. Saxory does not have enough to make that hold happen. He's got lurkers spread around the map a little bit. Needs to pull absolutely everything to this spot uh, in order to hold on to this position. That is his last hope in this game. He's running some lings around. He's got a lurker over here, which could maybe kill off a few probes. Although, as the cannons finish up, he'll likely be able to save those. Double storm there, just getting rid of that. Ah, I just, I don't see a way in. This is rough. I mean, I, I, this actually just hasn't got enough um, churning to deal with this, though. Like, eventually he'll be out skirmished. There'll be so many storms coming out from Best that Sactory just can't do anything. Like, you, uh, all the units will just die to spells at this point. Yeah, he's been on four gases for a little bit too long. Best has accumulated that resource. And still has a bit of a bank behind it as well. So many Archons in this army. You need kind of an insane number of a Hydra Ling a Lurker to stop a force like this. And with the storms in addition, I just I don't see it happening. Best is being a little bit tentative now. He's slowed things down quite a bit. He's not... Uh, jumping the gun, but he's run out of resources. He has nothing left in the top right. He's only mining from this base, this mineral only. So he's got to make this last army count. Otherwise, he probably won't be able to remacro another one. True, but inversely, it's actually also only mining from this 12 o'clock minerals. There's only True. gas left from these other expansions. So yeah, both players kind of like stagnating in their growth potential right now, which is why both of them are hesitating so much in trading. They know just how little they've got, but best will still come out on top, obviously, given enough time, unless Saxby could somehow secure more bases. 40 kills on some of these Archons. Absolutely wild. 40 kill Archon, holy. That is insanity. These Archons have been kept alive for quite some time. They've certainly paid for themselves, and they're going to pay for themselves all over again as he pushes into this final stronghold of Zerg. There's just not enough lurkers, and Lings are missing. You can hear our Korean counterparts calling out the GG already. Best is definitely going to be able to take this one home. A great little yeah. Ling counter is nice and all. Shutting down at the mining over here, but 24 supply speaks for itself, Shun. This is just yeah. about it. This is basically Sactory's like last frustrated hurrah. Like, I can't believe I let this game slip through my fingers, you know, and then he finally taps out. Unbelievable game from Bess. I think a lot of other pros players would have gotten frustrated and would have found a way of losing that game. Whereas Best is one of the few Protosses where I have to say he's a little bit of a comeback king in PvZ. I've seen it with him a lot. There's somehow you can almost guarantee counting him out, and he'll still somehow manage to thread the needle and find a way of getting a game winning condition. I have to say it, he's not necessarily the best PvZ players, but he's one of the best comeback kings in PvZ. With Sack Saxory gone, each team has lost a single player. We're all tied up right now with Light and Best going at it next on Pantheon. This should be an explosive match. Although, I don't know if we can match the uh, excitement of that last game. That was a very fun, very, very fun PvZ. Yeah, that was a really fun PvZ and uh, really impressive stuff from Best to make it that exciting as well. The comeback kid, the comeback wonder as far as PvZ is concerned. I can't believe he manages to do, do that. It's wild stuff. But yeah, Best versus Light on this map. Um, probably should see some kind of sparks flying, but I doubt we'll see the kind of tug of war we saw in that last game so uh, probably a little bit easier to navigate of the game <laughs> than we had to deal with on that craziness on minstrel so i'm looking forward to this one sam we could see some very 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 strong tvp here
Man, Minstrels put out some great games. There's just been so much fun uh, that we've had casting games on Minstrel. I'm really impressed with the map makers and their ability to renovate new maps for the, you know, tw for 2024 two-player maps. Like, that's that's got to be tough, right? Like, we've seen some duds in the past, I would, like, I would say... Uh, Neo Dark Origin, probably a dud. There's been a few duds out there, but that certainly not the case. Yeah, I mean, luckily we've got a few maps which have just been able to provide such spectacular games. I've actually kind of been happily surprised that Monty Hall has been so successful in its comeback. Uh, hmm. Not a map I would have thought we would have seen return to the scene, but really happy with what it's done for the meta, actually. And the kind of interesting games we see on there, I think it's definitely a, a, a net gain to have that in the map pool. For sure. And I think it's clear that despite the, being a very old, very, very old map, there's still a lot to be learned about how to play uh, all different matchups there, especially right. PVZ. PVZ has seen a lot of in innovation. Um, yeah. PVP is pretty funny on that map as well. By the way, I made a, a cast recently about a 20 plus minute PVP. I'm going to put that out tomorrow, but it gets pretty weird on Monty Hall, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, I, I really do like that there's at least one wild card map in the pool to give you those interesting games. I think that the game needs it both in terms of spiciness from the viewer's perspective, but also like to challenge the players into tackling like the more uh, nuanced ways of playing the game and to require a different kind of thinking cap to, to navigate. Um, nothing too crazy from either players in this game it seems though saying like both players pretty much just doing the standard mid-range uh, way of approaching this early game here no real crazy greediness or aggression coming out from either side yeah just a standard one goon expansion looks like from best he's got one in production i think he opted for a 19 or a 20 nexus which is a little bit early 21, i think yeah so going for that nexus a little bit aggressively light is going to build his uh, command center on uh, in his main base i was going to say on high ground there is no high ground on this map though uh, in his main wh why do you think he decided to go for such a defensive command center here is he trying to fake out best maybe try to make him feel like there's no yeah. cc this, this is the weird thing about it. Because on the one hand, you would say, oh, he's just making the safe to be safe. But yeah. the, there is the argument to be made that, hang on a minute, he wants to obfuscate the build order and actually kind of fake aggression and make it seem like he's being aggressive and really just expanding. Uh, on, honestly, I think this would probably be more of the former rather than the latter um, obviously it kind of he can take the advantage of both in this situation and make it seem like he's being aggressive when actually he's just expanding but honestly i think he was a little bit cautious as well i think there's both of those have gone into the calculation here is that a dragoon in the top right hand corner best has only got one dragoon back at home and he's scouting the map with his second dra or his first dragoon excuse me second dragoon gonna be waiting at home he did go for range, so it's not like he went rangeless into Robo, super greedy build. He's going to have some uh, Dragoons to fight, and he will have range soon. He's also got the uh, second gateway finishing up, and the Dragoon coming from behind is pretty big. That's going to put a lot of damage onto that tank, and the probes are doing a fantastic job of chasing down this army. He cleans everything up. But there are still vultures here in the mix. Going to start to pick off a few of these probes on the retreat. I think this is an excellent hold, though, from best overall. Wow, getting a lot of probes with these vultures, though. That was quite a bit of damage. It's such a beautiful hold from best, but also really beautiful from light to get the compensation with the vultures anyway. So loses the tank, loses the entire assault, but still manages to get the probe kills to find the compensation to make the most of those trades. This is a little bit annoying, though, for light not being able to set up mine here on this like, little cross point and to, to, to delay the third base going down is a huge problem this is a very very on curve third base coming out of best and light has been able to do nothing to stop that might better catch this probe on the return but that's about it yeah he gets one more probe but like you said a well-timed third base is the compensation that best gets for uh, 
Stopping this attack early on, this poke and prod from light handled successfully. Now he has a really nice timing for his third and his economy is going to be banging this game. Light just has to sit back, build a bunker, set up some turrets and prepare for what comes next, whereas Bess is just going to be exploding in terms of production. This is looking uh, pretty good for Best, yeah. I'm a little bit concerned for Light. I don't really see any easy options for Light as well. Um, I imagine he'll probably consider going into uh, like an early three factory here and then try and scale up from there. Maybe a four into five, take a third. I'm not too sure about this from Light though. I don't think he's going to find anything anytime soon to really punish what Best has done here. I feel like Best is just going to go forward with an edge. Yeah, Best has the observer in the main base and if he keeps watching this main and he sees any sign that Light is going to go for a third, I think Best can just take multiple bases in the bottom right hand corner and accelerate this game into a position that uh, he's going to have such a massive army of light just won't be able to handle it and we'll see best in his full ape-like form just smashing down the barriers and light is going to have a very hard defend time defending a third base if that's the case yeah, and it doesn't matter how, how much you stack up against Best, he still somehow manages to get through there with his King Kong strength. I don't know how he does it. Like I've seen Terran positions that look completely unbreakable, and he still just manages to just clean through it like a scythe through wheat. I just don't understand how he's able to execute those busts, but he manages to figure it out. Props to him. We may see something like that here as well. Um, if, 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 if Light is just going to turtle and stay on two bases, like Best will bring the, the pain to him eventually like best is happy to crack open even positions that other processes wouldn't even dare attack well look at that quite a few factories being set up for like five factory thus far a six may be shortly behind this i think that light is going to try and end this game and I'm not sure it'll be successful against Best, who's already throwing down gateways, and he's about to grab his fourth as well. Actually, he might delay that fourth base. He's got the probe over there, but because he's seen the number of factories that are getting set up, yeah, he might just uh, hold off on that. Get a big army together to try and fight this back, and it should be a successful hold if... Uh, you know, best his previous historical performance is any indicator. Wait, what do we got there in the top right? Looks like a starport. Oh, wow. Light is going to go six fact, but he's not going to attack, I don't think. With the starport, I mean, eventually he's going to want him to get going to try to get into plus two. It seems like he just yeah. feels that he needs six factory to get his third base. It's, it's best after all, so I mean, I, I would as well if I was like, I'd want, I'd want six factories before taking my third base, and I would not feel safe at all, especially with the early third from best. He is going up into eight gateway productions, there's eight gateways to five factories, um, maybe six eventually, so in terms of production, like, best is still um, able to keep up with light, but light will outscale him on this on this count for a while. The only issue is, is now we also see a very early fourth base coming coming out from Best as well. So Best will in long term um, be very much further ahead on the economic curve than Light will be, even if Light is able to trade well later on. But it doesn't matter. Like if Best can deny this third base coming down, it's, it's going to be all she wrote for Light. And that's kind of what Best is waiting for. He's waiting for Light to just move out of position just one or two times. And then he's going to like, you know, get a tactical like sledgehammer effect where he just comes in and clears everything up. But until that time, it looks like Best is just content to just macro up like a madman he's got a massive supply lead and a good position surrounding this tank army light it looks like he wants to take the mineral only as his third but that mineral only is insanely far away from your natural it's such a long distance to cover there's the command center Coming down, a dropship is going to be out on the map to try and bully Best a little bit, try to get some damage going on Best's side of the map, but he's already got cannons up, he's already got a good Sim City in his main. I doubt this will do a whole lot unless he brings tanks in this. 
and tries to right. set up and snipe down some probes. It's unlikely that vultures are going to get the job done. Yeah, I mean, I'm hoping he can find something because he definitely needs something. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's going to it's going to be in the cards. And I think he's just got vultures in this um, dropship. I don't think he's going to get a lot done with them. Yeah, just pure vulture. Not going to get a lot done. Zealots, uh, obviously not the best uh, counter to these vultures. And he's going to do the best that he can to trade uh, with that dropship. Picks up and bails out. Got some vultures down towards the bottom right as well. So he's slowing down slightly the uh, expansion of best. But eventually best is going to get a probe down into that bottom right and take another base. Light is just setting up for this third now. We're past the 11 minute mark. It's now 12 minutes in. And Light still it's doesn't crazy. have that third base set up. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so far behind. But... You really do have to just slow down when you're playing as light. You cannot get greedy. You cannot push out too quickly. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You just have to accept the fact that you're going to be behind the curve and, and live with it. Otherwise, Best will just ball you up and throw you over his shoulder into the waste bin. Let's see if he can do it here now. <laughs> running forward with a ton of zealots going to eat a lot of these mines. Here comes that shuttle as well. This is a very good setup. Here from Light, he's got so many tanks split up. Those are great storms on the left-hand side. But the Zealot number is insane. Look at how many Zealots are coming through behind this force. He's hardly got that. Like, there's hardly any Dragoons here, but the Zealot number is insane. He just runs them yeah. over. Yeah, he always finds like the critical apex in his timings where it's like, I've got a massive standing army and I've got a massive rally of zealots that are coming up on the map and I'm going to synchronize both together and it just hits you like a massive one-two punch that you just can't do anything about. It doesn't matter how many tanks you've got, how spread they are, in what formation, what configuration, doesn't matter what set pieces you've got, he will still come in and he will still demolish you, Sam. The tactical sledgehammer, I think you said it best earlier on in the cast, Jun. Smashing down the door of Light's base and breaking him into little pieces. Damn, it's impressive. Bess is putting us, uh, putting on a great show for us tonight. Okay, Best is slaughtering tonight. And the next head on the chopping block is Gamo, spawning in the top left-hand corner. We're on Deja Vu with Best in a vertical spawn. Do you think Gamo can stop the rampage of Best here tonight? I, I feel like he's just going to tear through everybody. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I, I kind of feel like Best is just going to smash him. But I mean, I'm, I, I want to be wrong though. I, I actually do want um, Gamo to put a good game out here. Uh, game only needs to put out a good game, that's for sure. Um, well, whether or not he will, though, I don't know. Best is probably feeling like a monster right now, and, and a best feeling confident is a scary thing indeed. Yeah, best. I mean, when he's on fire, when he is on the top of his game, there's just about nobody scarier, especially Terran players need to shake in their boots when they I mean, see this guy coming. Boots. <laughs> when they see this guy coming, you've got to be uh, covering your, you know, covering up, putting, got to get your dukes up as soon as you see this guy coming. He's ready to swing. Game of looking like a mech suit or something, man. I don't know what you need. You need like you know, like from aliens. You need that little the, the loader mech, you know? Like oh yeah. Really used against aliens. You need like something like that, right? Didn't need an exo suit. Yeah, yeah. Well, Gamo doesn't have an exosuit, but he's got a natural. He's got a few lings in production as well. And there's no cannon yet. Okay. Mm he's going to drop that cannon just before the lings pop out. And that should be enough time for that to finish. I don't think he'll be taking any damage to some early lings. How many were produced by Gamo? Just a single pair. So it wasn't like he was uh, planning to go and do anything across the map instead just chasing down this probe while getting his third base 
Yeah, usually if they want to be aggressive, you'll see six. If they want to be um, very pa passive, they'll make two. Sometimes you'll see four if they want to kill the probe scout so they can deny, so that they can say maybe go into like a three hatch hydra or what have you and like kind of disguise what they want to go for. You'll see at least four usually being made, especially if they don't drone scout players like Zealot, for example. They never drone scout in this matchup, so they'll always make four zerglings to compensate. Yeah, I, I, I'm a fan of the four-ling play. I like getting rid of that probe early, and like I was no. talking about earlier, you just can't you can't kill a pylon block with only two lings. It's not going to work, so uh, that, that pylon block can be endlessly blocking you. It just blocks you forever. So I like the four lings. Kill this probe, chase it away, make sure that... Uh, we've got best in the dark if we're gonna beat best we got to trick him a little bit i think when he's on fire right. like this it's yeah it's scary man you gotta do something sneaky and game was gonna pull out what appears to be a 973 although it could be some variation on that right and there's so many variations that this this might not be a very committed 973 at all could even maybe see only like seven hydralisks made total but um we we might we might also see a very all-in free hatch hydra here to just try and crush Bess and hope for the best, pun intended. Um, if he needs to catch this probe, though, Bess has done a very good job of keeping this probe alive. If he does somehow snake this probe back around and get into the main base and identify that this is going to be a three hatch hydra play, does allow him to really calculate and min-max his build to perfection to make sure everything's timed out perfectly so he only makes the bare minimal amount of cannons and, what, and all that sort of stuff. So... Who knows, man? I don't know. I feel like I feel like Best is probably going to be able to figure this out. But who knows? Maybe he can kill this probe scout. It's good that Gamo had a couple more Ling swapping so that he could block that ramp. You never want to allow this, this probe into your main. As soon as Protoss knows about this, the value of the Hydralis bust is diminished massively. He went for Ling speed, so this is the variation that Gamo's chosen. Going for Ling speed, he's going to be able to kill the probe and deny the scouting information. He sees a lot of drones in the natural, but he hasn't seen the number over at the third. Looks like three with a fourth making its way over there. So it's not a full on 973. Instead, we're going to have a little bit more income rolling for Gamo as he starts this aggression. He may be, you know, uh, throwing down a fourth hatch as this is going on. Yeah, 9734 is basically what that means. Uh, it's just where you, you're doing the 973 build, but you eventually throw down that fourth hatchery with your surplus minerals. And that gives you a little bit of a transition point and a production boon. So you're not technically fully all in with this, although you are committing quite heavily to it. A lot of cannons will be made in response from Besh. You need a precursory fort and just not die straight up, but two are not walked in. The one on the bottom uh, is very exposed as well to being shot down from range. We're only four hydras currently finished and in position. A few more additional hydras arriving, so for a total of eight with six lings supporting. So can do enough here to just bust through. The timings are pretty much critical here for Gamo. He will be able to kill at least one of these cannons for sure, uh, buffering against the Zealots with the... Um, Zerglings here does manage to kill one of those zealots as well. Uh, takes away a lot of the tanking potential while going to town on this bottom uh, pylon. To see if he can start chipping away at this wall and making additional hydras behind. There's no probes, there's no drones in sight, it looks like. So it will be a full on committal, at least for the time being. Yeah, more hydras coming up is a little bit intense. He does finish range and will go to work on this. Forge looks like he will get it and that upgrade has to be cancelled. This is very nice play from Gamo. I like the position on that frontal cannon. Okay, he's gonna pick that off again so he can get the gateway. Yeah, just just get the gateway. Uh pick off this wall, deny the the upgrade, and now Gamo can uh, start to drone once again and with that fourth hash on the way, like we were talking about earlier, it's not completely all in. He's got a pretty decent uh, you know method and route out of this uh, early aggression and i i really do feel gamos position right now it's, it's looking quite good yeah 
Yeah, I'm, I, I, honestly, like this is exactly what I was wanting to be wrong about. I wanted to see a very strong game out of Gameo, regardless of whether or not he won or lost. And we're getting that. We're seeing probably Gameo at his best. So there's no nerves really shining through from Gameo. He's just come out here and playing an A game at the moment, and I'm, I'm really respecting him for it. He's putting on a good show against Best and giving him a big run for his money, uh, going into more and more additional cannons. Not too crazy though, just like six cannons here, which is probably about the safe amount. You don't want to make too many, but you want to make just barely enough that he can't just bowl you over um, even though you've got some zealots to tank while you transition into the double forge in the main base and get your templar archives out it will be about 8 minutes 30 until he's even making those templars so yeah, this I mean, is a templar pre-storm pre-storm timing he's gonna yeah. try and hit yeah. this and I think the best has called it I think he knows he's built these extra yeah. cannons he's continuing to build cannons he's got the perfect counter game all it's crazy ah, it's 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 gonna be tough here. He's gonna pull the trigger. That is so many zealots in the front. The probes are there as well. Just buffering for these cannons is good enough. Gamo still making hydras behind this. The tran transition, it appeared to be underway, but it's not the case. He's just gonna go for this, trying to break through. That's so many probes that are going down in the front, but the cannons are still ha uh, hanging strong. A few more wow, finish warping in the back. Yeah, beautiful screening with the probes to try and deny some area from the hydras, but now they're in a good enough firing position. He was trying to deny space for the hydras to get a platform to be able to kill these cannons to begin with. There's still three cannons left. The Templar Archives hasn't yet finished an upgrade for Storm, so he's got the Templars just finishing up now. Storm will be ready in a few moments, but he's got another 10, 15, 20 seconds until the upgrade finishes and energy's ready. There's a timing to come in here and start killing these final three few cannons. The probes desperately try and deny space on that two cannons now remaining every probe is being called to duty right now to try and uh, prevent these um, base from being busted it doesn't look like it's going to happen though both cannons going down storm is now ready but it's probably too little too late does manage to blank over most of the hydralisk but there's still enough enough left over about half a dozen or so hydras uh, with additional coming in for a total of 10 or so will be able to come in here and kill all of these probes before the archons have morphed this is devastating and the critical timing from game i think he's just barely done damage enough to best to come through yeah this was a really intense moment best had the right number of cannons i think he just wasn't building cannons as the attack was coming in and yeah game will micro that insanely well the way that he was jumping back and forth and picking off all of those zealots without taking too much damage from the cannons now that last storm comes in best can he actually hold i don't think so nine kills on this archon but it will be focused and targeted down in the end there's not enough money really to keep this going dt pops out hold up Four, three dts in the mix there's no overlord he's gonna focus down some probes but he's losing all of his hydras he goes for the templar that is a big pick killing off yeah. that templar is very annoying but Actually, Best is going to hold. That is insane. Absolutely <laughs> insane. He's still alive. Well, remember what we said before. Best is like the comeback king. You never want to count this guy out. It's almost like he does this on purpose. Like he puts himself into bad situations because he has fun playing from behind and he likes to come back and get surprise wins. It's almost like he does this by some kind of weird engineering like of his own making. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to wait and see if he can somehow turn this into a win. It'll be quite miraculous. There is a, an overlord here at this point defense to deny entry to the natural. But the third base is undefended, saying the drones are being evacuated, though. Luckily, does manage to save those. But this is a denial of mining right now while losing hydras uh, trying to get across the map. Maybe somehow best can navigate this into a victory. Oh, he's going to lose all the DTs. How many cannons does he have at his natural? And how many storms does he have as well? That's the big question. Not Quite enough. a few zealots are available in plus one one should be done no storm energy available but gameo doesn't know that and so he's being a little bit careful with how he jumps forward he does get on top of that templar there's potentially one storm no no storms available oh both the templar get taken down but the cannons finally finish warping in there's two zealots four cannons is it going to be enough shoot it's so close oh it's so close with the probe screening it's just bait up no 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 he needs to keep blocking with the probes he can't let any hydras get surface area like this he's going to kill another additional cannon he needs to be a little bit more 
forward thinking with the positioning of these probes. You have to move into position as you as the hydras do, or, or you quite quite make it. And unfortunately, there's enough hydras here that I think he's going to be able to bully this down now. He needed that third cannon so critically. The other cannons are now going to start to warp in, but it might just be too little, too late. So the probes, though, doing such a great job of buying time. There's another Thai Templar out there that's so precious, like gold dust saying. 60 energy on that, though. Never 10, 15 seconds until he can storm. Beautiful screening of these pros, but he's barely holding on by a thread now. Additional cannons being killed as they're warped in. There is a critical timing here. Gamer, though, mining on two bases. I mean, just barely able to churn out three hatchery worth of Hydra to finish the job, but he might have just barely been able to do so. Final cannon goes down. There is still one warping, but now there's like four high Templars trying to get their energy. It's like a game of roulette. Who can get their energy first? Unofficially unbelievable, saying unable to deny the space on these hydras though they will kill this cannon yet again dark templar gonna be getting into the main base though that dark templar has done so much work it killed both the hatcheries at the third base so this is all in from gamo he's got no other choice but to win the game right here right now probe still off the line this dt in the main has 10 kills and it's killing more as game was trying to push in he's gonna lose the last of his hydras i can't oh believe it oh best wins the game <laughs> what <laughs> See, I told you! I told you he does it! It's like he does it on purpose! <laughs> oh my gosh. Just about killed KCM. He's falling out of his chair. <laughs> it's like he does it on purpose. I can't oh, believe this kid, man. No, he's too much. No, 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 no. Oh That's my god, he's too much to handle, man. Unbelievable. Best. How the oh hell did God. he make that work? <laughs> oh, that's so oh. crazy. I can't even begin to explain to you how crazy that is. Best oh. was oh down God. to one cannon several times during those fights. He had almost nothing left. We were fighting with probes for the majority of that game. Oh, the probe screening was so elite. It was so good. Oh my god, I've never seen anything quite like it. That's going in the oh folder for sure, Shun. That was an oh. insane hold. One of the best I've oh. ever seen. One of the closest I've ever seen. It's actually taking my breath away. It's crazy. Gamel's oh my god. gotta be feeling frustrated after that one, man. He had that game in the bag, or so it seemed. Best, though, with the clutch hold with the DT and, of course, getting across the map. How, how on earth do you allow a single DT to kill both hatcheries at the third base? Like, how, how much time does that take? It takes, like, several he's minutes. So convinced, he's so convinced that he's done enough damage to bust through. He's like, okay, surely I don't need this third base to finish the job. Surely I've done enough damage. I've killed so many fucking cannons. Like, yeah. And, like, surely enough probes. And Best is always just barely threading the needle. I don't know how he does it. How does he make the stars align like that to come back? But he's almost like he's doing it on purpose. It's almost like he's playing a game. Like, he's, like, a, j a jigsaw from the Saw series or something, you know? <laughs> like like creating weird scenarios where he doesn't really care about his own survivability. He just cares about making an interesting game for you to figure out. <laughs> I would love to see how many probes were left in best main because I think he pulled the majority of them to the natural. A lot of them came out to the natural to fight. And that was yeah. really the linchpin of the defense. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the times he had probes pre like like the first initial cannon bust attempt he had probes preemptive for the drill everything was pretty well defended there from best if he had if he had defended any worse he would have been smashed into pieces it's only because he was so tactical in his initial defenses that gave him just barely enough of an edge to not die outright so really crazy, honestly, that Gamo couldn't get the job done there. Like, bet, it, most Protoss players are dead in that situation. Really fucking crazy stuff. Speed versus best. Man, oh man. We've had some intense games today. But speed. I'm sure we're going to get another intense one from him. I already, I can already feel it. Shun. I was doubting the, the, the Gamo versus best. 
set. I didn't think it was going to be as intense, but there it is. Just absolutely insane. <laughs> you never know where you're going to get in KCM. And honestly, somehow the games do seem to be more intense than SSL. Uh, it must be something to do about the preparation thing, right? Like mm. you just you just don't have as much preparation time for the games. Everything is in a flow state. It's all about the ebb and flow at that point. And, you know, this is just pure StarCraft at that. Uh, then, then there's not much metagaming going on. And then, then, we, then we can really play. It's like poker when you're not able to think straight and everyone's on tilt. It's like now we're really playing. Now we're really playing. I don't know how best kept it together in that last game. Just insane. I guess you got to think the number of Hydra busts that a player the caliber of best is held over his uh, career. That might have been one of the closest ones he's ever held, guys. Not a joke. <laughs> like, there's, yeah. there's, there's like a probably a, a list in the back of his mind, like all the different types of Hydra Bus and the close holds that he's had in the past. That one Maybe that was insane. <laughs> Maybe that's what he's trying to do. He's trying to hit like a personal best, no pun, no pun intended, of like how close can we come to dying while still winning? You know what I mean? He's trying to create that situation of like, no one can do it like me, man. Well, he's not interested in creating that situation in PVT. So far, anyway, last game against Light. Um, he just absolutely crushed. Let's see if he can do the same thing against Speed now, who is opening a very normal build. This time, Best decided to uh, open with a Zealot. He's going to press in, try to uh, potentially cause some harassment damage to Speed. But it's unlikely he'll be able to do much with just one Zealot and this many Marines on the field. Vulture going to come out in a moment. Speed is looking fine here. Yeah. And yeah, he will be able you. to get this high ground taken just a yeah, moment. Yeah, with the full contingencies of Marines, he's, he'll definitely be able to, you know, there's, there's way, way enough tankiness in this army to do so. If there was only like, less, if there was like three, two, three Marines, you'd be a little bit worried here. But four, four Marines and a Vulture and an SEV, like you, you bully this back all day, every day, especially about the uh, range on that Dragoon early on. So doesn't able to get that um, SEV into scout though a little bit. He's going to go for the turnaround now, assuming that the correctly that the Dragoon is going to be coming to the front here. So we'll be able to maybe get a check on what's what now. Five, five Marines, one Vulture versus a Zealot and two Dragoons. He's going to focus the Zealot first. Picks that off right away. Puts quite a bit of good damage onto this one Dragoon. Will pick it off, in fact. But I don't think he can win the fight in the end. This Dragoon is going to take the day, so may be able to stop this command center from coming up speed getting a little bit greedy not going for a bunker yeah. but i mean he doesn't really get punished that hard here except for forcing some scvs off the line this is the beauty of uh, StarCraft is you're playing like games within games. Like you get so good at the at the game that you have to play these little tiny little skirmishes um, and both players know each other so well and they've got everything mapped out just perfectly that they know where the, the critical damage will be done. So they'll know if there's like, if I can come in here and win this one little tactical fight, then I could, I've got a tiny little advantage of having one Dragoon more than you or whatever the situation is. Beautiful late minds here. We'll be able to catch this Dragoon and this other Dragoon is the danger of dying as well saying it's this beautiful play from speed he's really been on top of things lately this other dragoon is gonna get eaten up as well absolutely stellar stuff for him this yeah he's gonna do so much damage my god so many probes are gonna go down and he's controlling the high ground with mines flipping past these probes that were pulled off the line to try and surround and behind the mineral patches you're never gonna get a good surround with those probes excellently done Keeping these vultures alive for a really long time. One vulture did end up going down uh, to those probes, but he's just done so much damage. This is this is almost critical damage already. Yeah, I mean, he killed so many dragoons and so many probes on top of that. I mean, it, it's 22 supply to 40. It's absolutely insane. Unheard of levels of damage. And usually you only see this amount of damage when the dragoons are out of position, but he just... He 
Greeks killed the Dragoons with the Vultures are very well, like, well, like very tactically timed mines and very, very, very beautiful execution. And he's using the shift hold technique on laying down those mines as well, just to like get the Vulture to slide off of them just that little bit quicker so that he can execute things as tightly as possible. Everything is as frame perfect as possible with the inputs on Speed's Vulture control. Very impressive stuff. It's been beautiful to watch Speed evolve and grow over these last couple of years he has become such a monster uh, in this matchup and in tvz and tvz i would say even more scary of a monster so uh, it's 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 so impressive so awesome to see him grow this game is just about over guys there's still a, a glimmer of hope for best because of his performance so far today i can't count him out but this is about as bad as it gets in the early game zv or yeah. pvt and honestly like tvp is not like um, pvz there's not as much comeback potential for the protoss in this matchup when terran is big and beefy and they can just a move you down without even really needing to like tactically siege anymore there's not really a lot you can do mm -hmm. as protoss it gets kind of scary you know like you don't kind of have the same tempo swing the the, the the terran isn't as brittle as the zerg his units don't just die in like two seconds under storm anymore yeah, and you're not going to be able to get Storm in this position anyway for factory uh, timing now from speed. He smells the blood in the water and he is hungry for it. He's going to come across this map like a shark looking for that kill. Five factories finishing up now and Bess is just he's just not ready. There's no way he can be ready even if he you know, only builds units and puts down a whole bunch of gateways how is he possibly gonna hold this attack it's a great stop on those vultures not allowing them to slip by and lay mines behind this or deal any probe damage at this critical moment but there's just so many units he's gonna run right up on top of this start to throw down mines vultures run by into the main base once again jumping on top of a tank though he will get one no oh gosh he had four goons hitting there and he hit it twice so i'm surprised it didn't go down but now the goons are gonna get milked he did get it he no, got he didn't it get that tank end. dead. He got it. There's two tanks dead um, already now. But the the vulture in the main is doing a little bit of a nightmare situation. He can't quite catch the vulture. He does manage to get the vulture, vulture surround. But the other mine connects with the dragoons. We can lose a few additional probes with some good target firing there. Uh, really well done from speed finding like what little drips and drabs he can get out of the orange, despite already squeezing most of the juice out. It's crazy the cost efficiency that he's getting from these small amounts of units. Now body blocking these dragoons off cutting them off from retreat gonna be forcing out a very quick gg out of best with these tactical assault speed is just so good in that early game you can see why he used to go by the id 10 minute flash absolutely insane stuff best the king has been dethroned that was uh quite the run in this week of kcm but it's over now speed is on a rampage he's gonna go up against jadong next starting in eight racks out in the front it is a cross map situation though so this is about as good as it gets for jadong yeah i mean this is uh ideal uh it kind of sucks honestly going for eight racks uh cross map radium you're not really gonna do a whole lot with it it's just gonna be defensive so I mean, in a way, it's not a, the, the worst end of... Tra I guess, um, you know, Terran players are pretty good at um, optimizing their transitions without committing to the 8 racks too heavily. But, yeah, it's a pain. And a pain. Like, going up against a 12 hatchery and you're doing an 8 racks that probably will not do anything is, is a little bit of a tough duck to swallow here for speed. So, speed... Will he be throwing down a gas after this? One thing I've seen from him a lot and I think it's it's quite strong, is him going for mech after an 8 racks. Like he'll get into a, a factory, start to put out some vultures, and then he goes right on into mech, and he is so good with vultures, just like we saw in that last game. Getting in and killing drones, it seems like he is almost always capable of making that damage happen, and it looks like no gas for speed so far. It'll just be Marines 
uh, coming across the map. He actually lifted and relocated the barracks, though. So realizing that it's cross map, he's not going to try too hard to get damage here. Just resting on that barracks production and uh, getting ready to take his own CC behind this. Yeah, he just needs to force drones to, to stop mining and whatnot. Because if he doesn't, then obviously he's not really getting any compensation for the 8 racks. Needs to be careful. Nini loses the Marine. Oh, he's going to lose the Marine. Pretty good drill from Jadong there. Manages to catch that. Uh, yeah, he basically needs to force the drones to come off the line to slow down the Zerg to compensate for the fact that he's gone for this 8 racks to begin with. So he has to still initiate some kind of assault to force a response. If he doesn't, then Jadong's just way too far ahead. Um, unfortunately for speed, though, not really coming out uh, on top in any regard there and loses a little bit for his efforts, but manages to get the, a decent drone pullage from Jadong. He did respect that pretty hard there. And not every drone that he could have pulled was pulled but a pretty mid-range amount of drones were pulled so overall got some compensation despite the early lead for Jadong still yeah no kills on any of those drones means that the eight racks not very effective Jadong chasing this scv around may not see a bunch of marines that are moving out on the map Ooh. he does see this wallen and the fact that there's nothing uh, here for speed should tip the hand a little bit to Jadong that there might be something coming his way and he should build a few more lings just to be ready for that. SCV's done a great job of staying alive. It's so low on that health, but it finally does get picked off in the end. He really wanted to see what was bobbing out of those eggs, of course. Uh, in the right. end, he's not going to be able to. All lings speed. If he goes back home right now, he might be in a really good spot. Yeah, I mean, can you imagine if he kept going with his marines? He'd be so devastated. But yeah, if he can just get back to his wall, he might be in a phenomenal position. This might be the one thing that helps him claw back into this game. He just needs to plug up these two holes tightly here. If Jadon gets any kind of value with these lings, it's going to be a really bad spot for him because he's going to have the, the mutilists coming up behind this as well. So if the marine count can be dwindled down with these zergling speed isn't going to be a happy chappy but so far he's got good area, area denial but with this marine dies on the left hand side they will become a, a funnel it's coming in case one on the right does manage to stick the links in slightly though now he gets to surround on these marines he's going to get a good good enough trade with these links it looks like this is unfortunate saying he is going to get the value with these links and that means additional zerglings suddenly become an even bigger threat this is such a commitment to Lings, though. He's really going to have to do well uh, with the, the follow-up Mutilus play. Oh, he opens the right-hand side as well. Oh, the Lings are getting in here, but the Marine uh, spread in between these SCVs so is going to hold damage. on pretty well. Uh, well, let's see about the, the Spire follow-up. Can he actually break this? He's going to make six mutas. He hasn't got any marines. No marines. Barracks in the main base is being denied. He can slow down turrets with this one ling. Oh, there's He's just got one medic. medic. Are you kidding me? <laughs> He's going to heal the SCV though. It actually works. There's a way of making this work, Saiyan. A fire bat comes out. That's all he's able to make right now. Um, he cancels one of those barracks. I think that's a good choice. It's really important that he gets some turrets started. He doesn't have any turrets, Jun. None of his turrets started yet. SCV yeah. goes down in the natural. And yeah, without any Marines. I thought he was going to build turrets a little bit faster, if I'm being honest. This is, I mean, this is he, pretty late. There is a world where he can still hold, but the problem is, is that the mutilists can navigate around the periphery of those turrets and just barely stay on the edge, come in and snipe SUVs that are building buildings and just keep the marine count down low. So even though you've got some turrets zoning out the mutas, they can still get into the nooks and crannies and snipe off marines popping out of barracks and what, whatnot. So yeah, a little bit of a problem still. Can get come in here and deny mining from the south, like we can see here, and get on top of this um, academy and the two depots so you can cover your bases with the turret placements, but the mutas can still find damage. He's going after that armory. It's getting quite low. Marines are going to come into this pocket, try to push this back. But like you were talking about, there's just not enough. Not enough Marines to fight this. And he's going to continue to harass the academy. He's found that one little nook that you were saying. I'm finally going to make a turret and push that back. But what are we, how are we looking on overall drone count? It's got to be very low for Jadong. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, he It'd barely be made minimal, anything. Like three mining minerals in the natural and like three on gas. Like only barely enough to mine them um, to, but to, to make two ba uh, hatchery worth of mutalisks. And a few surplus gas will slowly stack up. Well, he's coming back into this natural. Gonna start to hit the periphery once again. Force the Marines into a reaction. Looking pretty good for Jadong as he brashes this down. He's full 10 supply ahead. It's a little bit uh, misleading because that's all in mutas, basically. That's a huge amount of mutas. Uh, he's got like half of his supply is mutas right now. So it is a tad bit misleading. However, this is still a very scary army and Speed has to take it super seriously continue to build turrets you cannot stop building turrets here no matter what it's a shame he missed the click on that barracks if he didn't miss that volley uh, earlier he would have actually killed that barracks it was down to sub 80 hp with 10 mutilists he would have killed that barracks had he not missed that volley unfortunately it does give a little bit of life in the production for speed now four barracks is churning away on bio we'll eventually have enough biomass to fight the mutilists off but it will take a couple of minutes to reach that threshold so it needs to buy as much time as possible starting to be shaved off some of his SCVs now Jadong looks like he wants to transition taking the bottom right is his third base or killing SCVs right now if he kills six to eight SCVs he's not even even like he would usually be but he will start to uh, even the balance scales a little bit but now being threatened by a counter attack by this bio force might catch some of the muters in transit as well you really don't want to be losing this marine force though out on the map it'll make the transition for Jadong so much easier is going to pull the trigger on a stim try to track down these mutas good job keeping uh, those reinforcements safe but Jadong's still going to be sharking around the outside looking for any kills that he can find more mutas have been made there's the hydralis den as well the third base down in the bottom right hand corner has finished i'm not clear on whether speed has seen that yet he has his factory started but he may not be aware okay we got another scan he's scanning top left he's looking for bases no. he's not quite sure where this one's at just yet yeah, I mean, there is a little bit of a meta shift in where players will take this third base. Sometimes they'll take it in the natural, sometimes they'll take it in the main, or sometimes they'll put it at a very weird location. So Speed doesn't really have any kind of clue on where this base should be, even though this is once upon a time a very traditional place to take it. It still will be some time before um, Speed will be able to identify that. There's so many other positions that um, Jadon would likely go for, especially to try and mind game Speed and where it would be. Um, unfortunately, he's not going to guess right for some time. Um, Jadong doing a pretty good job of shaving off the bio force, but with four medics and this much bio in the group, as long as he controls it well, the mutas shouldn't be able to shave off too much of this. And uh, there shouldn't be a critical mass of uh, mutaling to clean this bio up. He will have to rely on the transition into lurkers. I think there's one hydra on the ramp, another one maybe on the way in the bottom right. So we'll have the bare minimum defense to not die straight up here. So it looks like Jadong has just barely managed to transition. The transition is here that's still a lot of mutas back at home it's tempting actually to just build a, a greater spire when you've got that many mutas and try to take advantage of yeah. it but i don't think that's in the cards jadong is just going to try and make this transition work he's still ahead in supply so he's looking very good but there's going to be a moment when speed takes the control of the map and when speed gets to that mid game things get broken he is a crazy crazy player and he just constantly surprises me with his ability to break open uh, zerg players who are supposedly very well defended yeah it's like Jadon's going for like the 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 meta player right now just two sunkens with three lurkers borrowed besides them in the natural and then a few lurkers to for the ramp in the, the third base the so very standard defense here from Jadon should more or less be unbreakable unless speed can find some kind of threshold that Jadon hasn't accounted for if there is some kind of crazy insane mass that he can find or get a defense matrix with this army to bust through or, or maybe get some good irradiates uh, to 
file amount only just now going down at 12 minutes. We have to remember that the relative scale of the game has been shifted back because of the eight racks. So her speed is at least one minute um, back behind the normal schedule. And Jadong's probably behind about 30, 40 seconds as well because of the drone pool. So every everything's a little bit behind schedule right now, which is why things won't quite line up. But the drop ships are already out, not quite getting spotted by Jadong. If he can somehow get those out, it'd be crazy good. But with the with the muters in this high number, it's almost suicide going for drop ships. Well, if the muters are in the main base dealing damage, yeah, maybe he can go across the map and get a drop into Jadong's main and flip this game on its head. This is quite right. painful dealing with with the damage going on uh, in the main right now. But look at that. Overlord was in the group oh. with the mutas. Catches the uh, uh, drops coming across the map. These must be loaded up already. They're going for the main directly. Scourge are coming up. But I think he's going to be able to drop everything, the entire payload into this main base, which is fantastic. He's going to deal a ton of damage here soon. This might be the comeback that he needs. Oh, the file is just exposed as well. Consume not quite done as well. So Mulis desperately trying to get uh, a snipe on those dropships. Does manage to catch one of the two, but the Marines are already in position going to work in the main base. Jadon's going to pounce though. Plus one carapace on these Mutilists. Give them just barely enough sustain to be able to whittle this force down to a nub. But now another drop coming down into the natural expansion. Luckily, there's some lurkers in position. Some of the drones going down, but good denial because of the preemptive lurkers being placed there. Jadon kind of already seeing what's in the cards are still only just barely cleaning these forces up though loses so many mutilisks to do so wow that was insane so many mutas went down uh, in that fight and dude if speed had lifted another like if he had airlifted some supporting forces into that main he would have rocked that group of mutas and completely won over the middle of uh, the the main base of course lurkers may have been brought up to assist at that point but dude speed has really taken the the wind out of the sails for jadong jadong is on the back foot completely he's just trying to survive and this is exactly where speed likes to put uh, his zerg opponents he wants you to be in this defensive position so he's ready to bust you open Right, he's got the contain set up at the natural expansion. Now we've got a tiny force going down to the bottom right. That's just to also contain down there and make sure Jadong still commits defenses. That way it'll be much harder to flank and cause disruptions. It's like containing a virus right now. Like the threat has been contained and right now he's going to build a vaccine to eventually kill Jadong. And Jadong's got to find a way of navigating out of this because eventually he will need a fourth gas and whatnot. So, but look at these additional dropships coming out. It looks like Speed wants to seal the deal and take it to Jadong. Uh, we will have a bit of a defensive setup here by Lurkers anticipating a drop. He might not expect four dropships though, Sam. Yeah, after picking off two dropships, it's, uh, it's a little bit surprising to see four uh, heading in for another attack. Oh, going for kills on these uh, science vessels, but he's not going to get them, and he's just throwing away Scourge right now that would be very useful. Oh, he's going to go in. Oh! Ooh. Ooh. Speed. Okay. Threading the needle. He's going in for the main base. This is so scary. That's so much bio going to be unloaded. Lot of Scourge ships. are ready. Oh, is he going to be able to kill any of the drops? Oh, none of the drops died. And he's Insane. right on top of these evolution chambers as well. I think speed is going to do it here, Shun. This is crazy. Wow, this is wild. Lurkers coming in from the low ground. It's going to be too little, too late. They won't be able to get in and deny it. GG, finally called. Speed has done it. It's going to be speed versus snow in the final saying It's absolutely crazy stuff. Zerg is going out. So now if snow can be speed, we will have that tiebreaker. Come on. Our final match. Speed versus snow on Minstrel. And we've gone over this already, but that case, that edge case where we could potentially have a tie in the overall points from all of these weeks is one game away, Shun. Just this one game. If Snow can take it home, we will have a tie and we'll finally get to learn what happens. <laughs> when right. 
went to a racist die. <laughs> just... I'm kind of scared to speak about it, saying I don't want to. I know. <laughs> like, oh man, Caster's but is Snow's, is this Snow's best matchup? I mean, come on, like you want to perform any time? It's one. It's a one v one map. PVT, your best matchup. Just gas steal him and style from there. Come on, Snow. He is sending out that very early probe. Likely going to be gas stealing the Terran. And guys, as we're getting into this final game, I just want to remind you to go down to the description, click the first link, go uh, like and comment uh, KCM's video, subscribe to his channel as well. I do appreciate it. By the way, there was some news this week that uh, the ladies KCM has been cancelled. There's going to be no longer a ladies KCM. Instead, they're going to replace it with... Uh, a tier battle the KCM tier battle so like some of these lower ranked uh, Korean pros are going to have an opportunity to show their stuff show their skill which I'm very excited to uh, to watch and to take a look at nice job with the probe getting up this ramp kind of insane that he managed to get by that but at least speed stopped it long enough to get his gas this, he's Speed is clowning on these Protosses, man. Like, I, I, this is getting kind of. I'm getting chills. I'm getting. I'm getting chills. Like, we might see the up, the up, the up and coming of a new kind of player, a new modern Terran that will revolutionize and like make all these other Terrans wake up a little bit and like get the fire lit up, up underneath their asses, man. Because I'll tell you what, Speed is playing like out of his mind right now. That was like 500 APM control on the SUV to deny the probe getting in, like. Beautiful stuff that you don't usually see that amount of commitment to out Terran players early on in a game like this, but speed just seems to be firing on all cylinders and willing to push the absolute envelope to the max every single time. Really impressed with him, man. Speed is maybe gonna have to change his name to 2009 Flash if he keeps <laughs> improving the way that he has been. Still not quite at that level, but putting up good games against some of the best in the world lately. I've yeah. been impressed with him as well. Factory coming up in the main, and he's continuing to mine gas. This is a little bit interesting. We're going to have a second factory. Really? Okay, speed. Double, fa double factory play. Is this really the way we want to go out? <laughs> I, I tell you what, no other Terran is probably playing like this. It might just be the thing that Snow doesn't expect, but it still can come back to haunt him. Two factory is just not that good, guys. And he's going to be losing this SCV to the particle beam of that probe as well, unfortunately. I uh, won't be able to get any additional scanning. Just a single gateway for now. If it remains to be the case, just one gateway the entire time, then maybe we'll see some fireworks. But I don't know if Snow catches wind of this and throws down a second gateway. <sighs> could look bad. Yeah, it could be very bad. And he's playing a bit of footsies here with speed as he was with the probe earlier. Wants to get past uh, these Marines and figure out if there's a CC coming, but these Marines are being very aggressive out in the front and preventing him from doing that. That might just tip the hand, really, to Snow. He might be like, huh, that's a little right. bit strange. I wonder why you're not building a bunker and being so aggressive. Maybe I just well, need yeah. another gateway. Yeah, usually you would see to fake this kind of thing is a very far forward bunker as well. Like they'd build the bunker, but they built it very far forward so the goons couldn't get in and check to see if the, the CC was on the way or not. But in this case, not a single bunker in sight, so it's very suspicious and kind of does telegraph a lot to Snow. And we see the additional gateway being thrown down now as a response to that from a few shield moments battery? ago. Yeah, the shield battery has to be done. Yeah, shield battery with the second gateway on the way. So there will be some stabilization coming out, uh, even a gateway to plug the gap and uh, deny as much time as possible here as he tries to stabilize. Might be able to get a drill on these Marines with probes as well here. Ooh, this this probe pull is too good, man. He's going to kill a lot. Okay, getting up in the main base, though, with the, the Vulture is super annoying. He's going to get a bunch of kills. Can't send anything up there to deal with that, by the way. Uh, just waiting for a dragon to pop out and uh, clear this up. There's no more mines available for that he kills the shield battery as well and eats a mine dude one more mine connection could seal the deal for snow that would be brutal damage 
A lot of probes going down as well. Oh man, speed. Has he done it? Are you kidding me? Might. Is he gonna deny us? Uh, are you kidding me, Saiyan? This is absolutely wild. Like, how oh, tank goes down, okay. If he can somehow stabilize, this will be really... He's still two factories behind us. He just needs to deny any more probes from dying. And he can keep sniping off the, the vultures and tanks. He will stabilize and be absolutely fine. Uh, so far, no additional probes have gone down in the main base. But now here comes the vultures laying down mines on top of this isolated dragoon. Does throw down the pylon on behind the minerals to deny any run buys. But more and more mines being shuffled forward. Does manage to get a beautiful drill onto one of those vultures other one slips through to the back laying down a mine and trying to go to work on those probes uh, does manage to get picked off by the face of shoppers just on those dragoons though more and more vultures though streaming in two at a time with the two factory play does now ta start targeting some of those probes down many have fallen already supply now 27 to 37 for speed speed in a very commanding position beautiful mine on the ramp as well and more and more mines being laid in the natural expansion saying this is getting crazy this is really wild. These vultures just keep streaming in. Eventually, Snow will start to stabilize. But look at the supply. 10 supply ahead. Speed is in a great spot. This has been successful enough to where maybe he can make the transition work. And Snow is just going to be behind. Uh, this game will go on, though. That is for sure. There's enough dragoons to hold on to anything that Speed can send across the map. For the time being, he's going to... Go for another probably five fact follow up. Uh, this is this yeah. is his mo. This is exactly how he I likes so. to play. I think so. It's gonna be yeah. We, he will he'll make the factory when he can afford it. He's obviously like you know sc scrounging for resources right now. How delayed this natural expansion is, but it will be maybe fast enough to get this four five fact transition rolling, so he can get a strong enough timing attack. Observer is be making his way into the main base to identify the exact timing that sees what um, speed is trying to go for here. Snow maybe can min max his own efforts to set up for how he's gonna best defend against this. If he can pull this apart with Reaver, it'll be another insane comeback and a it's, long yeah. week of insane comebacks. It'd be very difficult to do so, though. I mean, this is basically the build you want to crush Reavers with. So it does have three gateways, not two, guys. A little bit deceptive. Remember, one of those gateways is in the natural choke point. So it does have three gate uh, robo here, which is more than enough to survive for the time being. But once these other factories start to kick into high gear, we will need a lot more uh, units and Reaver micro than that to be able to deal with. Beautiful blocking of those vultures from Snow, kind of baiting him in there and managed to kill both of those. So something going snow's way to maybe stabilize this game a little bit already speed is moving across the map this guy is relentless he's just gonna push straight up try to break through snow's defenses that's a lot of goons to try and deal with just three tanks in this army uh shuttle is a great choice hope he has a couple of zealots popping out of this uh these gateways in a moment uh, if he does he shouldn't have too hard of a time breaking this the turrets are not easy to... There's not a good place to, to, to throw down turrets uh, when you're coming across this yeah. bridge. There's basically no buildable terrain, so it's going to be very hard to deal with that shuttle. Yeah, you basically have to push all the way past this rocky ground, all the way into these little circular areas where he's just now starting to build a turret. But as you can see, you have to control so much ground before the turrets can even be built unchallenged. Now dives on top of the, one of the tanks from the left flank and does manage to pick that off from losing two Dragoons. So pretty good trades, trading two Dragoons for one tank. More than happy to do that. Oh, Reaver's popping out right on top of the vultures. Luckily, the shuttle's there to save the day. Does will start losing some of these probes, though. So now it kind of occupies the time of the Reaver to just focus only on on clearing up these vultures that they'd be as annoying as possible and try and force studs out of the river. I think that, uh, oh, what is this mine? I hear a mine, but I don't know where it's going to connect. There's a mine connection Spoke on the out. top side. The tanks are pushing in. We have a reaver. We have the shuttle. Is it going to be enough for Snow to break this? He has to play absolutely perfect if he wants to stop this attack from coming in and just bowling him over. He's forced the unsiege. He's got the reaver out. He's going to get a big shot. A pretty reasonable shot there, killing off one of those tanks. But with only a couple of dragoons left, can he stop this? Two turrets are up now. And so the uh, Reaver's not going to be nearly as potent. Vulture's yeah. just running by into the natural, jumping right on top of these Dragoons. So annoying right now. Great shot with that Reaver, though. Shutting things down really just lucky, a little. It's so close right now, Shun. He's got 
500 minerals in the bank. He's going to throw down an emergency gateway in the main base. This is do or die. He has to hold this. <laughs> this is wild, Say He's barely hanging on by Fred. Now that the turrets are being leapfrogged forward, this is really rough for Snow. This is worst case scenario for a Protoss player. This is like the coffin nails are hammering in right now. You need to somehow muster the strength to three inch punch your way out of that coffin. He might have enough power to do that with these two Reavers. One tank going down. He is still constant relentlessly trying to get into the main base with these vulture stabs there's a lot of sim city being thrown down by snow to deny that potential but we'll be able to at least snipe the, the probes that are on gas to deny that that income as well and he has got a bit of a deficit on gas as well mainly just minerals here nothing really going right for snow in the way of stabilization killing one of those dragoons as well getting some value out of those vultures is huge while he's tightening the noose uh, right now on snow in the natural expansion with the two bases now churning away it's only gonna be a matter of time for speed can find the tactical checkmate move oh no he's got to do something here he's thinking about pulling the trigger and maybe on a counter attack with the reaver he's just picking at the edges now but he can't really leave the base uh unless he'll end up losing everything the vulture here has got six kills it just found the perfect location to camp out and it keep on killing probes while everything else is going on he drops the reaver once again gonna get another great shot tank is very low but it can still sit here and continuously hit oh my god he's got more vultures in here it's insane Shun. he's just it's doing wild. so much damage uh, i mean we thought sharp was relentless with vultures now we've got speed on the cards as well two real modern terrans showing us a new way of playing terran i'm all about it this is such high octane fueled gameplay i'm really enjoying the saying i would love to see more terrans adopt this style they're gonna have to really work on their multitasking though this is like 400 500 apm level of play absolutely wild stuff beautiful coming in killing up this reaver now taking full advantage of this exposed expansion just one single reaver with this shuttle trying to desperately hold on to here but it's not going to be a strong enough thread i don't think i think everything's going to come crumbling down in a few moments saying just one or two more tanks pushing up onto this position is always going to take for snow to be squeezed out of this game yeah snow has been on the edge of defeat for so long He's just barely been able to hold on this entire time. He does get the one oh. SCV, though, at that front turret. Stopping that for now is a big win, but speed is still closing in slowly but surely, continuing to shove army across the map. There's no ability for Snow to counterattack, even though there's nothing back at home. And Speed would probably lose all of his SCVs if there was a Reaver over here. He just can't afford to leave. He just has to break this. He has to stop this right now. Bring in the Zealots in. He's going to drop right on top of these tanks. He's going to try to break the tanks. Double kill on those two tanks is very nice, but... He drops the Reaver a second time and takes a whole bunch of damage it's, on that. This is beautiful play from both sides, saying. I have to say, I'm also seeing a lot of uh, spam stop on the tanks from speed. He's not unsieging them to make them expose. He's just spamming stop sometimes to make it so they don't just instantly lock and shoot and like blow each other up. Uh, really tactical stuff from both sides, trying to get the best of each other. Siege, tactical in the, uh, unload in the, between the three siege tanks. One of the tanks going down. He's trying to bust out with the remainder forces. I don't think it's going to be enough saying he's going to get the kill on this nexus and it's going to be the checkmate move that speed needed to finally close out this game and deny us ever ever finding out what that tiebreaker situation would have been like no <laughs> all right well nice nice game by speed you gotta give it to him yeah really well played he takes really well played. it home for the terran squad and he absolutely deserves it. The way he took down Best and Snow. Basically back to back. Of course, he did take out Jadong in between, but... Dude, just crazy, crazy good play from him. I love to watch Speed play. I'm going to be looking for more games of his to cast. Uh, more replays of this guy must be found. Dude, he is... So good. By the way, so good. both of the two top ladder accounts are speeds that number one and number two on ladder um so this guy is grinding like crazy he is gonna come to as or the ssl spring season with fire in his eyes and just, yes 
This this guy is crazy. I can't wait to see more from him. What a season. What a week of KCM, Shun. This was crazy. We almost saw the comeback of Protoss on top of all the comebacks we've had today with these games. In the end, just one point shy of tying up with the Zerg. Nine, eight, seven. Has it ever been closer? I don't think so. I mean, we've had we've had it in in recent seasons. It's getting closer and closer and closer. This is the closest. Now, if we look at just take a look at week four as well. So look at week one. Like we see a very tight connection. Then week four, they come back together. And in week eight, we see another very very tight hold on the ugh, man. These cables are becoming like spun into such a braided fashion that it'll almost be hard to distinguish who's from who soon. Saying. Which wire do we cut, by the way? Or well, the, the bomb's going to go off soon. Quick, which one? <laughs> Man, I would have loved to see what happens with the tiebreaker, but I guess we're just going to go into our semifinals. That's going to be Terran versus Protoss for the semifinals. We'll have Zerg waiting in the wings uh, in that final very very exciting season man i am out of breath really? from all the yeah. crazy comebacks this week I need to it's, go it's lie down it's been it's increasingly becoming that way like we've gone from it's been the last few seasons have gone more and more like this it's almost like the script writers have finally figured out a winning formula and they're getting better at like doing doubling down on the same kind of uh, it's crazy like before we had some craziness but this is just getting out of hand not only are we having such wild seasons but now now we're having wild seasons with the scorecard looking really dead even across the board like this is impressive it's been a lot of fun, guys. Thank you all for coming and hanging out today. I hope you've enjoyed this season as a whole. It's been a blast. We're just about at the end of 2024. And we're going to be rounding things out with an epic semifinal and an awesome finals as well, I'm sure. Whichever one, whichever team ends up getting into that finals, it's going to be fun. Zerg versus Protoss is Zerg versus Terran. Two of my favorite matchups of all time, so really looking yeah. forward to that. Any last words, Shin, before we let them go? Uh, happy Halloween, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic weekend as always. This was a little bit later than usual uh, just because of the holidays. Uh, just enjoy it and, and uh, have a great time. And thanks, guys. Make sure to uh, check out all the links in the description. Come hang out with us on Discord. Uh, support the channel if you can as well make sure to subscribe guys thank you so much we'll see you in the next one